What up brothers, it's Club King returning for a pretty different video this for my channel. I don't know if anybody will be interested in it, it could be long. I don't know if that's not your thing then obviously don't watch. Uh, I will start off by saying it's probably more for me, recording my thoughts and sort of... I think I'm doing it now because a lot of the guys will know that I've sort of not put no videos up for a while. Lost a little bit of enthusiasm. I've still been around and still talking to guys. I pretty much can't avoid that now. Um, but I'll tell you why so I have peaks and troughs um, everything really I want to cover as much as I can even if it means filming for two hours I don't mind uh, my thoughts were behind this really were recently I've had a lot of uh, downloaded films from my friends uh, one of my mates at work Lee I'm sure you've seen him in one of my videos before he downloads me a lot of films and I've been watching him uh, one of which were uh, Mike Tyson, Undisputed Truth. And it's basically a stand-up show. Uh, Mike Tyson just going through his life. Obviously, <laughs> I'm not paralleling Mike Tyson in any way. Obviously, he's been World Heavyweight Champion and so on and so forth. He's done things. He's been to jail. He's... So, on. like I say, he, he has had a life as such that we all pretty much know about. But it just gave me an idea just to, to put down on video sort of my background from... Been born, obviously, being a kid, what sort of kid were I, blah, blah, blah. Right up to, obviously, collecting, having my own family, collecting via family, uh, collect, collecting in general, the fucking cabinet of doom that I've had a million questions about. I'll cover that again. Some of the things and stories I'll tell, you will have probably heard them before, but the reason I'm doing it now is because I sort of had an influx of subscribers round about the time when I did the, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man review and obviously the fact it were broke got a lot more views and that the fact it went back and then came back to me and it's okay I, I seem to get a big boost in my channel which sort of took me up to where I think I'm at moment which is around uh, 2,600 subscribers which is fucking a lot more than I ever expected I thought I'd get a hundred a couple hundred probably from people around this area because they'd respect the way I spoke really that's what I initially set out for uh, views wise I think I'm somewhere about six and a half hundred thousand. Uh, sorry, six hundred fifty thousand. Um, although I, I'm sort of in my second carnation of my channel because I did have a channel full before, and I deleted hundred odd videos. Which I think now, thinking back to what I deleted up to what I've got now, I would have probably round about now passed a million views. So, again, I never expected that. Um, I'm going to try and cover why I think I've got that. Um, I will talk about some of the members at community. I just want to cover everything really, just waffle on because as well in the back of my mind, I sometimes feel like I'm getting out or I'm losing enthusiasm because I'm getting old and I'm sure that is a factor. And another factor is the fact you can see the collections all behind me. At times it outgrows the cabinets, at times I sell some and there's nothing I really want. And another massive thing is it's actually in my son's bedroom. Now my son recently turned 17 and I'd love to now be able to put this cabinet somewhere else or sell up or whatever just so we can have what you would class a grown-up bedroom somewhere you can bring girls back and not have to explain or oh, this is my dad's collection or whatever or this is mine and my dad's collection or whatever uh, I think the way around that is you explain what it's worth and then it sort of doesn't look toyish no more and we spoke about this on the uh, figure reviews but I'll go into everything I can think of I will say I'm doing this on fly so if I run out of things to say or I'm stumbling and stammering, it's because I've got nothing wrote down at all. I basically put on Facebook today, I'm thinking about doing this, mainly to record my own thoughts. Um, and a few people, if they wanted to know anything, uh, I'll tell them. I will cover most of the things they've asked me. A lot of them were very jokey things like, how did you get your fucking second chin? That were easy, that's just laziness and greed. Pretty easy. Uh, but some other questions, well, I will try and cover everything. So, the reason, like I said, I'm doing it now is because a lot of things. Firstly, watching The Undisputed Truth, the fact I'm getting old and I won't be around forever. Um, and even if this is just a video on YouTube that fucking my kids come back to when I'm fucking dead and gone or we're all done, we're all retired or whatever. I know it's a morbid thought, but when you're nearly 40, things like that do go through your mind. So, even if it's just a recording that I can put on looking YouTube and it stays there longer than I stay here sort of thing and also to sort of 
put a line under me, this section of my channel sort of thing, and said, right, all the new subscribers I've got, which has been around, I would think I've probably got about 800, 800 subscribers since the Spider-Man sort of fucking fiasco. So a massive thanks to the new guys. And I do see a lot of the guys who subscribe don't have any subscribers themselves or don't have any videos. So I wonder sometimes, have they made a channel just to subscribe? I don't know. I'm not trying to take credit for that. But if that's the case, then this is also a good way to introduce myself. And also, like I said, because I will be mentioning some other collectors, they will hear other collectors' names as well. So I just want to do it. Like I say, if it's not your thing, then turn off. And I understand. I, I don't expect it to get massive views. I just want you to all to just hear my thoughts, really. So let's get started right obviously my channel's the clipper king uh myself i'm rick bates actually our chris and richard bates i've got no middle name i was born in uh rotherham hospital to uh my dad's called pete and my mum's called bernadette which interestingly enough is uh, bruno mars's mum and dad's name i didn't realize that till i put him on wikipedia one day and I found out, I thought, cool as fuck, or what names in the world is mum and dad are caught same as mine. I, I know it's trivia, but I thought I'd fucking mention it. So yeah, I'm oldest of two siblings. I've got a younger brother called Craig, who I love to bits. Uh, we are close, a lot closer recently because he had some family problems and he actually come and lived with us for a while, which you can probably remember back through my videos. I was a little bit cramped for a time, but um, yeah, he's a good lad. He... Um, and I'm just my kind of person, which, to be honest, I come from a big family on my mum's side, sort of thing. And sort of the family values were installed mainly through Anne and her granddad, sort of thing, where, I don't know, family values as such, morals, honesty, um, things like that. So we're all like that. So obviously we, we are still close with cousins and so on and so forth now. So, yeah, childhood-wise, I were definitely a mummy's boy. Because, me, like I said, my brother were younger and from an early age were like a, a petrol head sort of thing, really into cars, which my dad were also. So that made my dad sort of gravitate towards Craig and therefore me gravitate more towards my mum. Uh, I'm proud to say that as well because I'm still close to, I'm still close to my mum and my dad. Uh, but I, when I think back, a lot of my memories are more so with my mum. My dad were like a working class workaholic basically. It were um, a pub steward or club steward. We worked. I grew up in a working men's club. Uh, from sort of, I think we're probably about uh, six or seven on. Craig would have been about four. Grew up in a good environment, although it were around <laughs> around booze. But uh, it were good as a kid because you were sort of growing up in a village where everybody knew you, sort of through your mum and dad, sort of thing. So we always felt safe. We always knew everybody knew us, although the downside of that is we couldn't really fuck about and get into trouble because it would lead to obviously people saying, I know your mum and dad and they'll find out. And they always did. It kept us in check and obviously kept us noses clean, so to speak. So yeah, good grounding. Um, like I said, happy childhood. Um, we're close to my mum, my dad and my brother and still am obviously. Uh, like I said, extended family, more so from my mum's side. We spent a lot of time with cousins and grown up with them and still close to them still and all do live really in Rotherham area. We sort of moved out and went to an area called Worksop, which is a bit of a fucking nothing town in North of England. Uh, I mainly grew up there and then when I met my girlfriend, partner, I then come back to sort of between Sheffield and Rotherham where we lived together and raised as kids obviously. As most of you know, I've got three kids of my own now, uh, Callum who's just turned 17. Ebony, who's 13, and Mia, who's 11. All great kids. I couldn't have wished for any better. Proud of them. Proud of them all for every reason. The triers, the... I know they're different. They're all different. Um, obviously, Callum were apple in my eye because it's easy as a dad to bring up a son, I think. I suppose that's natural. And the things he's into now sort of came through me and the things that I stayed interested in were through him and I'll explain that a bit later but yeah just growing up I'm a bit of a film fan fanatic I suppose I used to <laughs> I used to clean house because like I said my mum and dad worked steward and stewardess so working men's club worked a lot of hours pretty much a 24 hour job that and in between that my, dra my, fucking hell, my dad drove coaches as well so even in the hours when the clubs were closed 
when they used to close. My dad were away driving school run buses and everything. So I, like I said, I work all like, um, I said my mum would also work, so we'd spend a lot of time and do a lot of chores and everything to help my mum out. And I used to clean house actually in exchange for uh, money to rent videos. And I can remember videos at my local shop were about 50 pence a night to rent them. And I used to rent films constantly. So I bet I'd watch 10 new films a week or 10 videos a week. Most weeks I'd rent First Blood or Bruce Lee films. Although I weren't old enough really to rent them. The woman, Donna, she was called, who worked at the uh, local video shop. She was like a friend at family sort of thing. And obviously used to come drinking in our club. So new, new as sort of, like I said. And uh, yeah, she'd let me get away with renting older films. I'd always ask her to reserve me out new. So I'd get to watch out new films. And like I said, film buff used to drift off into my own little world. Uh, watch films, learn them. Even now, First Blood, I could probably fucking recite it or write the script to it without it even being on uh, and it still remains one of my favourite films so yeah school wise I was always pretty good I was quite lucky in a sense that when when your exams used to be sort of not coursework time and time again you'd have to learn something for a year and then you'd get an exam and I was always good under pressure so and I, well, one of them I didn't really know things were sinking in it just would seem to. So then when I get into an exam situation, I'd always seem to fluke it or whatever and come out of school with, I got nine GCSEs, a couple of them were like, um, I think about three, four of them were Ds, ran Ds and then others were okay. So yeah, I did pretty well. And to follow that, our Callum did really well with his as well, which I'm proud about, because same as me, he's a bit of a gobshite, uh, but he seems to be intelligent, deep down sort of thing, although he hides it well. Um, so yeah, school life, um, again, pretty good, really enjoyed it, like I said, film buff. Also, I, I were, and I don't want to blow my own horn in anything I talk about here, because it might just sound like I'm bigging my up, but I'm just trying to reflect and think back to my life sort of thing. And going back, I were always pretty popular, I had a good group of friends, um, I don't see them nowhere near as much as I should anymore because they still live over workshop way and I'm out here. I pretty much had to choose between them and my missus and my son around that time when I was 21, which obviously it's no decision really. You can drift back, which I did for a while, but then you lose touch and everything. And But yeah, I had a good group of friends, top lads. Um, we were a popular gang. Uh, I think my popularity as well sort of stemmed from the fact that on them rainy cold days, my mates could sort of call for us and instead of having to go out and play or whatever, we could wait for a club to close and go and use our pool table or snooker table or dartboard or whatever, free pop and crisps and so on and so forth. That sort of helps with your popularity when your mates know there's an advantage in it for them. So I definitely knew that. Uh, yeah, and, and club we had, we had his own uh, football team, uh, Lango Boys, which were run from our club. We had a changing room, full-size pitch and half-size pitch. I think so I grew up around football although I would say as a kid I was never best player in fact I was pretty shit thinking back and nowhere near as good as our Callum turned out to be although I were a trier uh, and got better as I got older sort of thing and still enjoyed playing football less so now because I ache it hurts when I play I got to that fucking shit age where you play and you enjoy it but then it takes you four days to run your fucking injuries off so yeah always around football Supported Liverpool from about 1982-83, probably because they were the most successful team and my friends were all into them. So obviously you want to fit in, you want to get the kits, you want to play football with your friends, so you support all they support. And that's why I picked Liverpool and a lot of people say, were well, you from Sheffield or Worksop or whatever, why support Liverpool? For the simple reason where, when I was like fucking seven or eight, I was a glory boy, I jumped on bandwagon, but I have stuck with them from fucking thick and thin and recently it's been pretty thin. But I think we might go on his way back up now. So that's why I support Liverpool. I always have since I was a kid and never really turned away from him. Although when I did start working, I worked in like, I wanted to, well, we'll call this the next chapter, sort of leaving school, so to speak. Oh, I'll just say as well in my younger days, toys wise, because it, obviously it's a collecting community and you'd want to know, I did always have Star Wars figures. This was another thing. When we used to go shopping on bus, we used to go to Rotherham. 
and it was pretty much a, a blackmail tool for my mum. We're like, if you behave all day and you don't pester, and you don't be asking for everything, before we go on, we'll go in Rotherham Market and I'll get you a figure. And it'd always be a Star Wars figure. Obviously, a child at 70s, it's pretty much all you could collect. So, yeah, got a lot of Star Wars figures, vehicles and figures. Uh, as time progressed and I grew out of playing with them, I sort of moved into Action Force figures, the really good articulated ones. Just get back in fucking focus, what's happening here? Sorry, my camera's decided to have a fucking minute with it, son. Sort it out, you can't. Right, back in. Uh, yeah, moved on to the Action Force, again, figures and vehicles. Uh, pretty much saved me money to get them. I think around then, they were only a couple of quid for a figure, so... You know, I'd get one like every second week or something like that and built up a good collection. Then after that, the last thing I sort of collected as a kid myself were probably the E-Man Masters at Universe figures. All of which I've named now, if you had the original ones, would be worth a fucking bomb, but I never saved them. I sort of learnt from that as well because I kept up when I Callum got into it, he sort of did. Well, I'll explain that in a bit. Um, yeah, I found that as I got older and I didn't play with them no more, they'd pretty much get chucked in a fucking drawer or whatever. But then what I like, what I used to like to do is we used to have a real cold fire and used to put poker in fire until it went bright orange. And then what I'd do is I'd get a figure and I'd use this fucking poker and like try and put blast marks on it. But when I realised that it was fun melting stuff, I used to see how long it'd take so it'd melt for like Han Solo's fucking head with his poker. Or I'd see how, how orange I could get this poker and then melt it and shit like that. So I pretty much fucked all my Star Wars figures up. So of them I've got fucking none. Uh, just a story on that as well. When my granddad on my dad's uh, side died, he had a... Um, it had been my dad's. He had a... Um, I think it was Chipperfield Cir Circus Corgi set. Got the trucks in with the real fucking rubber wheels that you could pull off and everything full mint in box my dad had had it a, uh, sorry my dad had had it as a kid but he'd left it at his dad's house when my granddad died and he obviously went for his house my dad's oldest brother took this chipperfield circus get it to his son and he played with it fucked it all up and about 10 15 years off that there were an episode of antiques roadshow and this fucking this kid or this bloke at the time he'd had the same one sold it and it was worth thirty thousand pounds my dad were fucking wounded, obviously, because it were his. But he never even went to his sons. He went to his nephew, sort of thing. And he told me about it. And I'd sort of then start thinking, fucking hell, all them Star Wars. I had Millennium Falcon, fucking Attack Walkers, and this, down over, X-Wing Fighters. And I'm thinking, I never saved them. What a fucking mug. So <laughs> that's how it went, really. And it always set me mind, because I thought, £30,000. Obviously, it's not a fucking life-changing amount. But fucking, for somebody to give you £30,000 for a fucking toy that you've not played with in years and years, which just, it boggled my mind and sort of interested me in toy collecting and so on. But I didn't, anyway. So I left school and started work and I went on a YTS as, uh, because my experience had been working behind my mum and dad's bar and glass collecting and so on and so forth. I sort of got pushed into a career of hotel and catering management, which it was all right, it passed time, it put some money in my pocket, made it so that I could put some fucking petrol in my motorbike uh, never loved it because you have to work shit shifts Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday afternoons, wank shifts I fucking hated it I lost track of football, I lost track of my friends I did that for about two years and thought this ain't for me at all, I'm fucking sick of this my social life's in fucking pits I don't want it so at the time I was about 18 I fucked that shit off got a proper job so to speak uh, moved more into warehousing and realised that I found women uh, my local bars used to do all, well so I used to do uh, did alright with women for me son <laughs> had my fair share in my younger days uh, always had a nice one as well I think even now my missus is attractive some of you might disagree with seen her but I obviously uh, obviously think so but yeah I always did alright with women luckily enough um, and that was sort of from about 18 onwards for those of interest I lost my virginity two days after my 16th birthday, which is fucking risky telling you because it were a last in school year younger, so that's a fucking pisser. Um, but for the sake of me not getting locked up, we'll say she was 16 as well. Eh? Um, but yeah, that were... Um, I don't know, I, 
I pretty much, I weren't one of them kids either who were struggling to get in the way. I, I just like fucking, I don't know, just put it off and put it off. I suppose I was scared. I don't know. And then obviously you have your first crack at it and after that you get hooked. <laughs> a, a lot of this is fucking jokes and all. I, I'm trying to, trying to think of funny ways to tell you because I don't want to fucking bore your life. So, yeah, so, um, say so into my late teenage years, did that, got a job. I've always worked. Even from being like 13 on, like I said, I was fucking collecting glasses for some money in my pocket. And then working behind bar, which I was well underage to be working, and then moved into that trade, and then obviously eventually got out to part time when I was 18. Uh, started seeing my missus in March of 95. We'd been together about a year, she told me she was pregnant. And it was like, oh, right, fucking hell, I was 21. Uh, I've got to say, and all, it was one of them minutes, I still remember it, we were in my mum's house, or downstairs, and she went, I've got something to tell you. I'm like, what? And to be honest, thinking back, at this time, we were on rocky ground, it was one of them situations, you know, you're in a relationship, you've been in there about a year, and it's so, oh, fucking, what's happening here? Are we moving forward? Is all happening? Are we going to end up living together? Is this the one sort of thing? It was sort of that, and I don't know, my head were a bit all over the place. My lads was, uh, my mates were still like, be single, be single, come out with us, fucking Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights, and I, it were tempting. But then I got our last saying, I've got something to tell you, I'm like, what's that? I'm pregnant. I'm like, fuck. And I had, like, did a body shiver, what I'd, I fucking, I don't think I've ever done one since. Possibly when my dad told me he got throat cancer a few years ago. But it's like that news that hits you, and you think, fuck, and it just knocks all fucking wind out of you. I thought I was way too young. I, pl I always planned on having a family, because like I said, I'm from a big family, but... When they tell you, this is it, you're fucking, you're gonna be a dad. I felt a kid, I felt immature, and I knew I weren't ready. But I spoke to my mum, who were happy about it. I spoke to a couple of my uncles and aunties who were like, what the fuck have you done, sort of thing. And I was like, well, fuck you, sort of thing. I'm, I'm old enough, we're old enough, we're together, what's the problem? I told my dad, and my dad sort of, Man, a few words, so to speak, but he basically just said, look, you made your bed, you're laying it, you fucking, that's basically it. We took decision out of my mind, because I was sort of toying with the idea, do I run away and be a little bitch and fucking let somebody else bring my kid up, or do I fucking man up and deal with it? And I thought, I'm not making nowhere near enough money, I was living with my mum, she was living with hers, I knew I weren't ready, but I just thought, well, at some point it's gonna come, so I thought, fuck it, man up. And I did, and we've been together since, and that is like fucking 19 years, like 19 years we've been together. Just coming up to 19 years, like I said, about 15 for March it were. And like I said, Callum's now 17, just turned 17, so we've had his moments when we fell out, I think everybody does, but uh, I only went home once. I went back to my mum's for about three nights. Uh, other than that, we've sort of worked through his problems, everybody has them. We know how to piss each other off. Um, I don't know, we clash sometimes, Not fi never physical, I would never hit a woman, um, but yeah, like I say, I fucking do love her to bits, and I love kids she's given me as well, so, um, no but respect for her, I probably won't mention it, because she don't like shit like being on YouTube and that, she's quite a, a secretive, per not secretive, but pri a private person, so I probably won't mention her, but she's called Karen, I do love her to bits, and like I say, I couldn't be no proud of a kid she's given me, and I couldn't be no proud of her for giving them to me, so, yeah, so, moving on, Callum was born in, um, no, fucking hell, I was in November, I was born in November, I don't know if I said at the beginning, I was born on 28th, uh, 28th of November 1974, which makes me just turn 39, like I said, in Rotherham Hospital, and I don't know, I've only said that because I don't remember if I said it at the beginning, Callum was born on 30th at 12, 96, like I said, he just turned 17, um, and I, when, when Callum weren't very old, he probably two or three, and I last worked, she worked at a coffee house, and one of the days she used to work was Saturday, she'd have to work Saturday afternoon, and I never worked Saturdays, I didn't work Saturdays, so I'd have Callum, this would be before Ebony and me were born, and he'd be like, right, what the fuck do you do? We're a two or three year old kid, you can take him to the park, but it gets boring, or you can do this, you can do that. And after after a while, it will like, I take him swimming, and then you think, oh, I can't do that again, I took him last week. So what we sort of fell into was sort of, I 
found that he was responding to the things that I say. Come on, let's sit and watch ET. Let's watch this. Let's watch that, and so on. And he was responding well to it, enjoyed it, and we spoke about it. And the more, more I tried to show him things and teach him things, the more he'd become like me, I suppose, which were fucking flattering because to have a little version of your seven running around, it's best feeling ever. Um, and then we'd sort of got into a routine of going out of here. Then we'd go to like a couple of big supermarkets, local, and Toys R Us, down into Sheffield, and we're basically toy shopping. I was basically killing time, if I'm honest. It was ba I was occupying him until his mum come home, so then I could have the Saturday afternoon to myself. That's basically what it were, in all honesty. But I found that I enjoyed it, and he enjoyed it, and we were enjoying each other, sort of thing. So we were always close. We were fucking inseparable from him being a baby onwards. And I'd take him out, and I'd dress him like a mini-me, and I'd fucking say, oh, I used to have this, and... That. And round about this time, collectibles wise, the stuff were being rehashed that I'd had as a kid, the Star Wars. And I'd look at them and I think, fucking hell, these Star Wars figures weren't like this when I were a kid and I was earning decent money. And I think, oh, do you want one, Cal? Yeah. And I, I'd probably want it more than he fucking wanted it. In all honesty, and like looking back now, I I'd, I'd probably didn't realise at the time it was just sort of something to pacify him. But I'm thinking, well, I'd get him a couple of wrestlers, a couple of Lord of the Rings figures, Star Wars, uh, Marvel stuff, anything really, and he'd bring him home. And I'd always sit him down and he'd get home and he'd open whatever I'd get him and I'd probably get him, I don't know, a couple of figures, four or five figures a week or every second week or whatever. And I'd bring him home and I'd say, when I were a kid, I had this, this and this, and this is what I did to him. Now, obviously don't leave him packaged as a kid. Unpackage them, play with them, but always respect them because you never know what the value will do on these. And I always drilled it into him for being a babby onwards. And like I say, his Lord of the Rings figures are upstairs in loft um, still, and his Star Wars figures. And I bet you I could go through that box and there'd not be a broken sword or spear in that box and they'd all be in there. He used to fucking play with him and he really organised when he played with him and I'd play with him and fucking so on and then his cousins would come and play and he'd like I'd hear him saying to his cousins don't do this Eve don't, don't bang them together too hard just do this and I think to me said he's sort of repressed because of what I've told him he's been that careful he's not enjoying them although I could see that he were learning to look after things and then obviously the stuff he'd get as he got older he got into wrestling and so on and that and his collection moved forward and he'd have totes like big plastic tubs under his bed, all in order. He keep them really tidy. And like I say, a lot of them are still up loft now. He sort of grew out of that and he grew into PlayStation, which sort of, I don't know. It, I, well, I played PlayStation as well, so we play games together, FIFA, Call of Duty, so on and so forth. That was obviously as he got older. My daughters, obviously, I'll just touch on them, but because I've not really mentioned them in community before, and I am more protective of my daughters for a lot of reasons. When they go out, they both got they both got iPhones now. Actually, my daughters, and I like them to be in contact. So I am a lot more protective for them. Um, but like I say, I obviously I did have my daughters as well. But I reflect Callum because it's more collection orientated sort of thing. But yeah, they always had what they wanted. It was always a case that if Callum had had that, then they'd have to have that. And I've always done that. So yeah, like I said, they are now fucking, I suppose, young adults the same. Maybe not so me, she's only 11, but she acts like an adult. Um, so yeah, going back to Callum, as he grew up, I saw her. One year, I was struggling to buy him stuff. Well, I weren't struggling to buy him stuff, because I've always bought him, like, a main present, or a couple of big things and then stocking fillers just so it looks like more to open on Christmas morning, that sort of thing. But this one particular year, I was uh, in Meadowall, near where I work. I'll come back to that in a bit. And I saw an Obi-Wan Kenobi figure, uh, the Ewan McGregor one. We'd been to pictures, we'd seen films, we'd got them on DVD and so on, so he knew the characters and I thought, oh, that's nice, it's a 12-inch thing comes with these accessories and the nice thing I find about it, the most appealing thing were I can sort of use this figure to display if you if you look after your stuff you can box it back up because it had a, a clam inside inside the box so you could take it out and then when you played with it or done whatever pose it put it back in 
So I got him that, and I remember it was £27 from a shop in Meadow Wall called The Last Picture Show. I bought it, and that time was probably the most expensive figure I'd bought him. Because I'd always buy him, like, fucking six-inch figures or so on, which are about eight quid each in England. And this was, like, 27 27 99 I think. Which were, like, fucking £30 for a fucking toy. It was, like, that sort of mentality. But I thought, no, I'll get him. It's special. It's for Christmas. I know he'll look after it, and I'll get him that. And I bought him that one. And that was first 12-inch figure... I bought for Callum and I get it in for Christmas. As time went on, they released more figures and I were, there used to be a Forbidden Planet down in Sheffield and I used to go there but I was also on mail order list so I'd get, um, I'd get the catalogue, oh, fucking camera, one minute. I think Cameron must be bored of me when it starts fucking zooming away. Anyway. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I got the mail order catalogue and it had come and they'd be releasing new uh, new sideshow figures. And they'd obviously the Qui-Gon, the Mace Window, all the early ones, the Jedi version of Luke Skywalker. And I'd get them, I'd order them from that or we'd go down to Forbidden Planet in town and I'd pick one up and he's got more and more and more. To the point we had like some floating shelves along this back wall actually and sometimes you can actually see holes where they still were. That's how long since fucking I took them shelves down. Holes are still behind these cabinets. We had got these floating shelves and they had three figures per thing so he like he got up to about nine. Nine figures along these shelves. Um, and he liked them, never really played with him and I were like sort of just buying them to game him really. Not he never played with him. I weren't filming them, I weren't photographing them or anything. I weren't doing fuck all with them. But I were enjoying seeing them and being able to pose them and things like that. And that's what I were getting into. And his interest in them were fucking dropping a lot sooner than mine were. Which were weird. But anyway, I, and I, the more I reflect back now, it, sort of, it, it makes me feel even weirder. Because I think, if anything, he would have grown into it. Like some of the kids will send me messages now. Oh, this is cool as fuck, blah, blah, blah. And I think... Well, Callum don't think so, and he's round about his age, but that's how it is. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put a short pause in there, because I'm going to have to empty my memory card, and then we'll get back on, and we'll start on moving into Hot Toys. Right, get back to it. So, we're on about moving sort of from Sideshow to Hot Toys. Right, I think it were the following year after he'd had the Obi-Wan, I'd seen, like I said, I'd been having the uh, Forbidden Planet mail order catalogue because I were ordering, still I were getting his Marvel Legend figures just to sort of complete lines, and I were ordering the Sideshow figures through the Forbidden Planet, or like I said, going down to pick them up. Um, it got to the point where he got all the Star Wars ones, and they were like, wait, what do I get now? And I was looking for brochure, and I can remember this one particular edition, had got Hot Toys, uh, the Alien Marines, which I weren't interested in and didn't think they looked that good. And they had the Rambo 2 version of Rambo and the Troutman figure, which I were interested in. But I'd look at them and I can remember they were fucking 59 99 these figures, which were obviously twice as much as I'd been paying for this sideshow. I'm thinking, 60 quid for a 12-inch figure? Fuck, no way, that's not fucking happening. Anyway, I'd seen them, and that was my first introduction to Hot Toys. I'd never seen them all. At that time, actually, I never had a computer in house. I've only had a computer in house probably last maybe six years. Never had a computer in house. I used to use a computer at work, and I used to have enough real work and never wanted one at home. I've only had an up-to-date mobile phone recently. I've always had a mobile phone, but it was just a fucking recipe for disaster, that. So I always reluctant to have one. But anyway, like I said, I've never looked online, I've never been on eBay, never used eBay. I just used to do it for this mail order catalogue and I'd phone up and order someone, like I said, go to my local branch and pick it up. So I'd seen these Ram Rambo and Troutman. Troutman never bothered me, Rambo looked pretty good. And I'm reading about it and I'm looking at rubberized body, no joints. I'm thinking, fucking hell, it looks nice. Like, I even thought Ed Scope were good, thinking back. I'm thinking, fucking hell, that looks really good. But I'm not shelling out 60 quid. I could get him 10 Marvel, uh, I could get him like fucking 
nine, ten Marvel Legend figures for that. I could get him a full series, so fuck that, not happening. So I avoided it. Anyway, the following year after he'd had the Obi-Wan, I think, I was I was trying to he'd had that year, he'd had an Aragorn and he'd had Legolas from Lord of Rings. And I was looking for Boromir. Couldn't fucking find it. Everywhere I fucking found it, out of stock. Couldn't get it. Couldn't order it on uh, on mail order. I thought, fuck, what am I going to do? And I thought, right, I'm going to get my mail order catalogue and I'm going to phone every branch. I don't give a fuck. If I've got to drive from here to fucking Scotland, I'm going to find this Boromir figure, which were, like I said, about 27 quid. And I rung round all my local branches and the closest one to me that had it was Derby, which is about an hour's drive away from here, I would think. Uh, only time I've ever been to Derby in my life. Um, and I thought, I phoned them up. Do you have 12 inch figures? Yeah. Do you have Boromir from Lord of Rings? Yeah. I says, if I'm going to drive down now, will you save it, man? He says, we will. Take my name, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, went down, and it was coming up to Christmas, about November. I can't remember what year. I'm going back probably five, six years ago, I think. But anyway, will you save it, me? Yeah. So we goes down to Derby. Me and I last makes a day of it. Oh, kids were at school. Um, went down, and I thought, well, I'll take a pocket full of money, and we'll get a load of Christmas presents while we're there. So anyway, we goes down to Derby, has a good day. Finds this Forbidden Planet, which were like fucking four times bigger than one in Sheffield, a really good shop, and they've got a lot of up-to-date stock. So I'm like a kid in a sweet shop thinking, oh, I tell our lass I'm getting this for Callum. Really, in my mind, I'm thinking, I want this me send. You know, it's fucking weird. Dads will probably know, and if they're honest with the send, they always buy stuff for the kids that they want the send. Scale electric, remote control cars, fucking everything. If they're honest, they'll all admit it. And that's basically what I was doing. I was getting stuff I knew he'd like, but I would like as well. So... That's what I did. I bought him Boromir. I also picked him up a Pierce Brosnan Bond. And while I was there, we were looking up and down aisles and they got a lot of good stuff, like I said. And this fucking camera's gone out of focus again, the fucking muggy thing. Let me try and put light on, see if it makes any difference. Whoa, that's brightness. Sorry about that. We'll call that an advert. Eh? And now that is way bright. But anyway. So we're looking up and down aisles. And I see the full Rocky set. Drago, Club of Line, Apollo and Rocky. And I pick some up. And obviously I open them. They've got rubber bodies. Fucking belt, robe, gloves. And every, and I'm looking at Fucking hell. And I've never seen anything like it toy wise in my life. And I think even now, the figures I have seen since are amazing figures. But this, like, it sort of took me back. I thought, fucking hell, it's not even like a figure. It's like artwork. That body's all sculpted. And look at its head sculpts and fucking blah, blah, blah. And thinking back, they were shit, to be honest, compared to what we see now. But it was the fact I'd never seen it before. And I thought, bearing in mind, I had no YouTube at that time. I'd never seen a review on Hot Toys or anything. I honestly can say I found Hot Toys we are at YouTube or we are at the internet. I'm like, fucking hell. And they were 80 quid, they were 80 pound each, and I wanted them all. And I'm looking, I'm thinking, fucking hell, if I take all them, then that's going to put a rate dent in this money I've got in my thing. So I'm like, trying to justify it to our lass, and you can see it look on our lass's face as if to say, you want to spend fucking 320 quid on them four figures? And I'm thinking, yeah, I do, but I can't fucking say that to you. So anyway, we went, I'd look around Derby, and I said, listen, I'm going back, I'm getting just Rocky. She's like, it's 80 quid. I says, I know it is, but fuck it, I'm going to go and get it. So anyway, I went and I picked Rocky up, and it was the Rocky 4 version, American Trunks. Put it on, wrapped it up, and I've got to say, that was in mid-November. Between wrapping that up and hiding it somewhere in-house, and actually getting it on Callum, I bet you I'd unwrap that figure five times just to look at it. And th that's fucking... <laughs> I should, maybe shouldn't have said that because I Callum might watch this video and realise that's what we did with his Christmas presents but that's the honest truth I wrapped it up and like people have come to house my cousins are coming my best mate and everything and be like look at this come in just sneak up here get it out at fucking hiding place open corner up slide it out look at that bastard I'm like fucking hell that's amazing and I wrap it back up so our last won't know but that's honest truth that was the first art toys figure I bought for Callum for Christmas and just after Christmas, our lass's mum and dad got uh, internet and it was that old shit fucking dial up or when fucking broadband were on its arse, pretty much like mine still is. 
they got computers. So what I do is on my day off, I go and sit down there, their house, have a cup of tea, and then I find eBay and I thought, right, I can now get Clubber for 60 quid. I can get Apollo for 60 quid. I can get it's not all on the same day, but what I do is I'd steadily start building a collection. And and that is how I found Hot Toys. Uh, I got the Rambo 3, eventually got the Rambo 2, 1, um, a lot of early ones. And then after a bit, when I get fed up of using their internet, I saw uh, they had a deal on at Car Phone Warehouse. It was like, get a phone on contract and you get a, you could either have a PlayStation, was it PlayStation 2 or PlayStation 3? I think it was PlayStation 3. You could have that free or you could have a laptop. And I got this phone and I got a laptop and then I had broadband fitted here. And then I pretty much went to fucking town on collecting. Round about then, there was somewhere between 60 quid and 100 quid per figure. And I just got into collecting and collecting. What I did early doors is I realised as well that you could build relationships with uh, Hong Kong sellers. If you spoke, because of the ask a question thing, you didn't always have to pay what they were asking for. There were ways around it or you could say, I, I want this but I can't quite afford it. Or if I buy that and that, can I have, will you do me shipping off and shit like that. Um, and then I put a big order in. I remember putting a big order in where... Fuck, I can't even remember who it was win now. It weren't good shit. It weren't one of the big names now. It might have been Lung 10 Toys or something like that. I can't remember. And I actually bought three Bank Robber Jokers and two Billy Jean Michael Jacksons all in one shipment. And it was the first time I got a custom charge and it declared full amount. So my custom charge was about 130 odd quid it were. And I was fucking wounded because I didn't even understand it. I was tracking this box or fucking agents. Box obviously were fucking massive. Weight were fucking huge. Fucking shipping price were massive. And fucking I'd spent a bomb like fucking 500 quid anyway it came. Parcel Force let me know. We've got your box. We've got it. Come and collect it. 132 quid. Fucking wounded. So anyway, I got in touch with this guy, and like I said, I wish I could remember his name. Told him what had happened. He at that time didn't realise that you could mark things down. And the flip side to that was, I remember about four weeks later, I'm at work and I'm unloading a truck. I want fork truck, and parcel force van pulls up. Rick Bates. I says, yeah. He says, oh, sign for this. I'm thinking, I ain't fucking ordered out. What's this? And the guy, because he fucked me up on custom charges, actually sent me a free Elboy figure, which. <laughs> At the time, were a fucking awesome figure. It probably still is an awesome figure now, but it's a while since I saw it. So that was one of the early figures in my collection as well, and I never bought it. I eventually ordered it again, I think, for my cousin. But, um, yeah, it, like I said, you could do things like that with sellers, and I was sort of getting known. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and um, put a slight pause in here, and I'm going to move on to community stuff, how I got into the community. Right, so, um, might be staggered some of this, I might have put some cuts in, I don't know, um, but it, anyway, it's just a case that when memory card fills up, I've got to keep emptying it, and also battery just went flat, so I've now got it on fucking main, so it should be alright, I just hope that uh, memory card does last, but yeah, I just said, buying through uh, eBay, I got to know about three or four sellers in Hong Kong, like I said, Doug Gyobi 11 who I was buying from pretty early. Um, Loon 10 Toys, Good Shipped. A uh, couple of others. And um, yeah, they were supplying me with the figures. Obviously, I was still getting bits that I could from Forbidden Planet. I got the Iron Man Mark III Battle Damage, which is a figure that I got around the time when I decided to enter community, so to speak. Now, before I came into community, I'll just say the guys I used to watch were... The biggest at time, if I remember rightly, was um, P2, definitely. And it was round about the time where P2 were not just on P2, I think it was something like P223. And then he was sort of making his own channel called P2 Vision. It was about round that time, so whenever that is, maybe five, six years ago, like I said... Uh, I'd got a collection, I'd got the middle cabinet, uh, I'd got them displayed pretty nice, I'd got a decent collection to be honest. Um, to go into the cabinet, because I get, 
asked about it so much, I'll go back through the story quite quick. At the time, I was driving a seven and a half ton truck. Uh, Wyman and a few others know where I work. I'm just on outskirts of Meadowall, literally a stone throw away from Meadowall in a uh, business unit. We're uh, overspill storage for a lot of the shops in Meadowall. So all we do is five runs a day in and out of Meadowall. And around that time, I was driving truck. I don't so much now because I'm supervisor. So I don't drive as much, but I still do go in with a driver. So we're out on these runs, these... Uh, particular day and we go into bay one which bay, service bay one is sort of back end of marks and spence anybody who knows meadow or if you don't know meadow or this is gonna make no sense to you at all it's sort of back end of marks and spencers and sort of the shops downstairs sort of right back of where usc is now and then the shop up the lane so the f1 shop where um last picture show used to be and uh, model zone where that used to be Anyway, we're on that loading bay, and we see four of these, the central cabinet. People ask me about them all the time, where can they get them from, how did I get it, blah, blah, blah. I've told this story fucking millions of times, but like I say, I've just had about 800 new subscribers, so they're going to want to know it also. So I'm going to tell you as if you're all new. So I so, say, we're on this loading bay in Meadow Hall, and we see four of these cabinets. As they are, so to speak, obviously, the size it were, it got the spotlights in the top and then the wiring for the spotlights sort of this spotlight here and then one at the bottom so at the time we pulls up the sort of the guy from the f1 shop is sort of having a uh, an argument with meadowall's employees what, what we call skip rats the clean away gang they sort of empty to uh, skips and not clean up cardboard up and segregate rubbish and all that shit. And basically he's trying to throw these four cabinets away because he's just started a load of new ones for his display inside. So he don't want these. But Meadowall skip rats won't let him throw them away because the glass and there's nowhere for glass of this size to go. So I pretty much fucking jumped saying, look, we'll take these cabinets for you. If you say I can keep one of them because we can't take anything off at docks because obviously it don't belong to us, it'd be theft. So we can't take anything. So I needed his consent to get this cabinet. At the time, like I said, I got... A collection, a decent collection, but they're on floating shelves along this wall. So anyway, it goes up to him. Excuse me, part over here, you're trying to get rid of these cabinets. If I can get rid of them, uh, do you mind if I keep one? He says, if you can take them and destroy it over three, then you can keep what you are. Take them, get rid of them, get them away from me so I ain't got to pay to have them disposed of. If you can take them, you can keep what you want. So I brought four of the cabinets back from Meadowall, put them on our truck, strapped them up, took them back to our warehouse. I... I knew I wanted one, so I picked the best one. And I said the best, I mean the cleanest. There's some of them had like Formula One stickers on them and so on and so forth. Some of them, the lights didn't work. So I, I pieced the best one together, cleaned it all up and decided I was taking it home. I then took mine home on our truck, broke it down into pieces and brought it home. So I got three going spare. My cousin said he wanted one, then he couldn't have it because it wouldn't fit where he wanted it to go. So basically, I took an hammer to the others, smashed it into fucking tiny pieces, took it back to Meadowall and dumped it in their skip. So what he'd wanted to do really in first place and they wouldn't let him do, I just fucking did it. I smashed them up and chucked them in Meadowall skips. So that is our contact cabinet. If you ask me where you can get one from or what they cost, I'd have to tell you the honest truth, I ain't got a fucking clue. I think, like for like, the closest I've seen, I think you'd probably pay about £400 for one, just because of the size and the fact that it is wired. Um... I'm quite lucky because, as you can see, I've got the Avengers up there, I've got the Dark Knights here. And what I did do, I found some uh, big slabs of polystyrene. They're about that thick, about that wide. Well, they, they were endless sort of thing. I cut them down into slabs and I made the stairs, just wrapped it to with cotton. It's just a cotton sheet wrapped around polystyrene, which gives me the sort of three separate tiers per shelf. So that is how I come to that cabinet. Uh, been asked about it a million times that's the honest truth I think to buy one like it like I said I think you'd be paying £400 and probably a lot of shipping because it weighs a fucking ton so that is how I got that cabinet anyway coming back to community I had got a collection it was displayed in here it always has been displayed in here and I'm sort of starting to watch YouTube videos the biggest like I said was P2 around the time it, what he was doing P2 we were sort of we were building the old style Predators and I think, I could be wrong, but I think he was living in his base, in a basement or something like that. He, his videos were quite dark and gloomy, but there's something about his personality where like, 
over excited he were hyped up all the time and it, I, I sort of gravitated towards him I liked it the only thing I didn't like were he were basically only doing predators he were buying the predator builder kits doing them and then showing you how to fix them when he broke them which he nearly always did which I found funny um, yeah just loved his videos and I watched them subscribed uh, I watched him then another guy called Night Slade. I watched him, but he didn't have a lot of reviews, but his reviews I kind of liked. They were really organised, really calming. Um, yeah, quite enjoyed his. And then I watched a guy called Loyal Variable, who had a nice collection. Again, it were Predators. Predators were a big thing at time. And I'd sort of send him questions, and he'd either not answer, or he'd fucking give me one-word answers, and so on and so forth. I'd be like, why do you only collect, uh, why do you only collect predators? Why have you got this predator when it were only in a film for so many seconds and blah blah blah? Which is probably why he didn't comment because he probably thought, fuck you, what are you asking me bullshit like that for? But anyway, and then I used to watch showcases uh, by Dean Knight, and obviously I enjoyed Dean Knight's videos. I still do now. Uh, I will say. I, with Dean's, I always feel like I've watched, when I watch a video, I always feel like I've seen that video before, if, if you know what I mean, and it's, not in it, I'm not being funny when I said that, but when I watch it, I think, I'm sure I've seen that picture before in a different video, and I know that's because Dean takes thousands of shots, so you might have seen the picture slightly like it, but it'd be in a different video, so I watched that, although I never classed Dean as in my field when i got into it dean were never really in my field so to speak i see dean more as a photographer than a reviewer although when dean does make videos that are reviewing or telling his thoughts i actually prefer those videos but that's just me i know he, he gets massive fucking support because of the type of videos he makes so they were in and then the other one were morris who is moggy 215 again what made me gravitate towards morris was the fact that he were excited and he's when I listened to him, he sort of reminded me of... When I looked at him, I thought, he looks like a Rachel chilled out character like Lennox Lewis, who I were a fan of, a massive boxing fan. So he had this calming demeanour like Lennox Lewis, but then he'd have a voice sort of like Samuel L. Jackson. The, the way he spoke, I, I liked it, and his sort of little comments would like remind me of the films I liked, such as Friday and other things like that, how he spoke, his, his phrases, I, I always really impressed me how he said things and the fact that when he opened it, you felt like you were sat in the room with him, so, or you were the opening it. It, the, it's a fucking natural talent and I don't think anybody does it like him, there's some good guys out around now and I will mention them later, but I still don't think nobody unboxes a figure like Morris, and not because he's the best or the best uh, camera work or what he says or whatever, it's just he naturally uses enthusiasm so much so that it comes straight through the screen and you feel like you're there with him. It's like he'll get to the part just as figures exposing, you'll be like, oh, go on, go on, Morris, go on, go on, take it out. What do you think of it now, Morris? What do you think? And you're like saying this in your head, and then he's like, other side of the world, he's saying whatever he says, and like you think, oh, yeah, I agree, and that were it. And that's what I prefer. So they were the guys I really watched early doors. Do I know? Like, nah, you could fucking throw a blanket over 10 different reviewers, collectors, they're pretty much a muchness. There's a couple stand out from Pike, uh, again, I'll mention them later. But a, a lot now, the reviewing styles are very same, same, same sort of thing. The opinions are very same. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'll come more to that. But they, they're the guys that I remember from when I first started watching. Now, which also, I will say, Sean Long around that time were massive and he's still massive now and there's others I know of up to bottom us and somebody is it Sean and us or some like, I don't know to be honest I don't watch them I've seen them but I don't watch them and the reason I don't watch them is they remind me of American DJ in fact they remind me of if you watch football from America and if you're a football fan in this country your commentators will say things that you automatically know you you know the terminology. But if you watch what they call soccer, their commentators are so far over the top, you're laughing at them. You're not laughing with them, you're laughing at them because of how cheesy they are and how... I don't know. It, the things they say, I can't even impersonate it. It's that embarrassing. And I can't even think of the terms. But they'll say things... Like we'd say cross ball, 
they fucking they over elaborate on it, and that's what I I really don't like about the guys I've said. I, I'm sure the great guys all together, and massive respect to them. And I, I suppose if I'm being honest, I'm fucking jealous of how successful they are or how many views they get. That's the honest truth, and a lot of people will say they're not, but they really are. The views they get, I'd fucking love them views because them views lead to AdSense money and lead to fucking sponsorship, but it also leads to bullshit because they don't review honestly. They tell you how great everything is, but never, never tell you anything bad, which is why you're sort of all pitched in together as a, a YouTube reviewer. I would be classed as a YouTube reviewer myself. Now, you could break that into two categories for me. You could... You could class your, you could class yourself as a you as a uh, Optoys advertiser, which I would class um, Sean as and the other two guys, Optobotomus and the other guy. I would class them as advertisers for Optoys. Myself, I would class as an Optoys critic because I tell you everything, what's good, what's bad. Now, the good thing of that is, or the flip sides to that is, the good side is you can sell what you want. I don't owe nobody nothing, so I can sell what I want. If a figure shit. Or the seller shit, or I don't know, the manufacturing shit. I can say it because nobody's saying, hold on, how the fuck am I going to sell 20 of them when you're telling everybody how bad it is? The downside of that is you've got to buy your own fucking figures. So there is plus and minus points, like I said. And on their side as well, you can watch the reviews and everything is, oh, this, get this, or oh, you can get this at Alter Ego, blah, 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 and it's all this, and no, 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 this is the greatest figure you are ever gonna see and it's like that and you think fucking evangelist please just be quiet and that is what i don't like about it it's not natural and it's not it's not honest or that's how it feels to me but anyway i, I don't want to disrespect anybody because like i said they're famous for a lot of reasons i suppose and massive respect to them i wish i were a fucking view behind them but yeah that is why i don't watch and i never have really watched or supported anybody like that because it's not my thing Going back to the five guys I mentioned, I found that I was sending comments to P2 and very rarely got anything back. I only ever got replies back from P2 when the Clipper King channel got established. And I can understand it now, if I'm honest. But until my channel were established, I got a feeling that he was sort of so far above me, didn't want to acknowledge me, so to speak. Same with Loyal Variable and same with Night Slade. Sent them a lot of comments and got very little back. With Dean and Morris, and I've said, told you this a thousand times, with Dean and Morris, nearly every time I sent them a, a comment, they'd send me something back, and I thought, fucking hell, I feel equal, although I'm not. I, I've not put anything into this hobby, yet I feel equal. They're taking the time out. It might have been a three-word answer, and I can honestly remember the first time I got a shout-out in a video with Morris, and he actually, and I wish he'd still got this video on, because I'd love him to go back and find out the first time he mentioned my name, and I'm sure he called me the Crippler King. And he, he come back, I'd said summer, and he says, and the Crippler King said, blah, blah, blah. And I was buzzing. I thought, fucking hell, he ain't got my name right, but fuck it, who gives a fuck? I thought, at least he's listening. And I just fucking gravitated towards Dean and Morris and pretty much fucking idolised them it, as a community. I'm not a massive respecter of fame, if I'm honest, but I did always think to me, saying, oh, fucking hell, they're sound. They're just genuine use. And... I like what they do and I like how they do it and that is pretty much how I started watching it. Now, the next step was sort of getting involved and becoming the Clipper King, so to speak. And the name, to explain, came from PlayStation Network. When Callum first got the PlayStation 3, we set it up online. By this time I got the laptop, like I said, so we got broadband. I come home from work and he wanted to go online on Call of Duty and I had to set him up an account name and I tried fucking Rambo, obviously it had gone Rambo 2, Rambo 3, Rambo with fucking numbers and letters and blah blah blah, couldn't get out like it and me, I was tired, I'd just come in from work, I'd got my work t-shirt on and it's obviously the company I cut work for is called Clipper, I looked at Faye and I thought, what will go with Clipper? And I don't know why. First thing that came to my mind was the Clipper King. I typed it in, basically asking machine, is this one valid? You can have that name. So I got it and I stuck with it. And that is where Clipper King name come from. It's no more, no more than that. It's basically the company I work for. And I thought, what is something that's going to stand out? And it's basically the Clipper King. And that were it. And there's no other link other than that. 
So I set the PlayStation Network up. When I made my own channel, I made I basically made a channel just so I could comment on others, and I would become the Clipper King, like I said. And then I remember, I'm sure it was Morris, and I'd seen a lot of figures he'd got, and I'd got them myself. And I was like, oh, I've got that, I've got that. And then one day he sent me a question, so I like, well, what do you have? I've got blah, 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 da, 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 da. I've got the Rocky figures, got Rambo, and he was like, well, they're sort of old classics. You should show them. And I'm thinking, what's he mean? I should show them. You should film them and upload them. And I'm like, oh, I ain't got a video camera. I didn't have a fucking phone with a camera on. And I don't know. I just sort of put it off and put it off. Anyway, I kept thinking about it. I thought, oh, it'd be nice because I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that. And around that time, the only other source of information on Otto is were the MC Toy Review, the sort of written review. Uh, I don't know if that website's still up and running. I assume it is because I've heard that Michael Crawford geezer who on a podcast a few months back. I don't know if it's still going or whatever. But, um, yeah, watching that, and I like the fact that they were scoring each category. And the reason I like it is because it reminded me of Top Trumps from when I was a kid, where you could say, oh, this figure has 20 strength, but this one has 30 fighting skills. And I like the fact that they were doing this with the figures because you could say, well, which has got best head sculpts? And you could flick through and say, well, that one got five, that got five, that got five, but this one only got four. And I like that sort of the uniformity of the review. I like that in a written form. And the more I looked at YouTube, I thought, nobody does that on a YouTube review. So anyway, on Morrison's sort of push, show your collection, show your collection, I thought, fuck, how do I do that? Anyway, sort of stumbled, and I'm sure it was one of our lass's family members, had left the video camera, it would probably be in an holiday, and they'd left the video camera, and I thought, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And I come up here, and I set up a shot, and this cabinet were here at this time, but the bedroom was set out differently. And I stood there, and the first shot I filmed were of that Scarface uh, canvas, which says, say hello to my little friend. And I put the camera to the thing, and I pressed record. And I... I didn't know what to say. I was like, and my camera, beep. I'm like, hello, um, this is Rick from Sheffield. And I think that sounds shit, stop. And I fucking started about 17 fucking times. Click, just start filming. Same shot every time, and all I wanted to do is to go from the canvas down to the collection, scan down and say, I've got this figure, this one, this one, this one, this one, blah, blah, blah. I didn't, I weren't thinking, can I create a channel? Will I be liked? Will I be known? Will I be spoke to? I weren't thinking anything like that. All I basically wanted to film were a video showing me collection so I could say to Morris, look, Morris, I'm not bullshitting you. I have got all these figures, I've told you. And that's really why I filmed it. And I think I re-uploaded that video back on. If you seek, if you seek through my channel and find it, I sound totally different to our review now. I sound timid, I sound nervous, I sound like I don't know what the fuck I'm saying or doing. And that is the honest truth. That is how I started. And like I said, it was just all in one shot. And I said, I've got this, I've got that, I've got that. This figure come from there, blah, blah, blah. And I tried to go on, uploaded it. And then you don't really know what happens when you upload. Anyway, I fucking uploaded it. And like, first day, probably two views. Probably both Morris. Next day, another view and a comment. And then it was like, fucking hell, nobody's watching yet. These have got fucking 300 views. And I'm like, fuck, I'm not doing that again. And then after a bit, a couple more views and a couple more comments. Different people, people I didn't know, I'm like, what the fuck? So then I'd start, I'd learn how to reply to comments and then I'd reply and they'd reply back. And then I could say, how do I film a video in bits and then cut them together? Or what do you recommend I do to show fame? And then I thought, well, what can I do next? And I'm like, oh, I don't fucking know. I've shown my collection now. And I thought, well, hold on a minute. What if I take the figure out, I try and set it up like the others do it, and just tell them my thoughts on it, would it be interesting? Anyway, I just, I, in my old videos I used to put, our Callum's telly on, I used to put the film on, which I'd normally got, or I'd download, I'd put it on, and I'd put the figure in front of it, which was shit set up, because the the camera always focusing on telly in background, but I didn't know no different, and I'd just film. And then like, I'd film bits if I could, or do it all in one long thing, and I'd have wrote down on a piece of paper, people I wanted to shout out, the categories broke down, I'd sit there and I'd look at it, what's the head sculpt like, yeah, pretty good, da da da, what's the costume like, well it's good but it's not very intricate, what? and basically it was just a matter of just saying what I saw, looking at the figure, looking at it in depth, 
and seeing it and, and looking at how it moved and like how I want in my mind I'll have a pose and I think but it won't do that pose because its shoulder don't quite do what I want it to do. But instead of just fucking glossing over that and saying, oh, everybody buy it, it's best figure ever, I just thought, no, it's bullshit. Tell them, tell them what I can't do with it and tell them what I can do with it and tell them what I'd like it to do and tell them what it brings, but also tell them what I'd like it to bring. And I just carried on doing that. Anyway, the views weren't doing fuck all, really. They weren't, they weren't troubling a thousand, to be honest. But like I said, we're getting a steady little following and my subscribers were creeping up slowly but surely and, and people were watching and nice collection dude and uh, thanks for mentioning me and blah 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 and I'd, I sort of realised that you could get famous by association and by that I mean the more people that, mention, that I mentioned, I realised that they would mention me back. So I thought, well, hold on a minute, who are the people, who are the people I, I watch... Um, I can tell them guys about it, but then if they see what I've said about them, they'll say about me. And that is how I went. And like, again, I found that I was shouting out P2 and I was shouting out Dean Knight and Morris and this person, that person. And then uh, Dean last, he were one, I started watching early doors. And I realized that only certain ones were then in turn mentioning me back, which then would bring more subscribers. And I thought, I thought I'm getting it now. I'm, I'm understanding game. It's sort of a, Whatever they say, it's sort of a popularity contest. And at that time, I was still reviewing in a kind of timid and, like, soft-spoken. and Not because of how, that's how I were, because I weren't. I was always like I am now, but I didn't... I felt conscious when I was rolling. I think that's the best way. As soon as the camera went on, I'd, like, reluctant to show myself. I'd be fucking reluctant to say certain things. I'd be like, oh, I can't swear. No, that will not be good. What will YouTube say? And then, I don't know. And just went on and like I said the views never really did open but I was enjoying doing it and I enjoyed the process of uploading and a couple of people commenting and me commenting back and like that and that's how it went on for a long time the the standout video for me really was the if I remember rightly I'm sure it was the Terminator 1 version at T800 and I got the figure and it was brand spank it was the first figure that I bought release day I paid fucking way of it. In fact, I can remember I paid about 180 quid for that when it first came out. When Hot Toys figures were going for about 100 quid each. And I thought, fuck it. I want it and I'm getting it. And I got it and it was sent release then. It was one of the first reviews up. And I saw that where my videos were getting a couple of hundred, this one was like fucking straight up and getting shit loads of comments. I'm getting subscribe, 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 subscribe. And I'm thinking, fucking hell, that's not a review as good as others. And I'm thinking, the fuck, how come this one's shooting up? Obviously clicked in my mind because it was new stock. And I thought, that's why. Because if people want to see this figure, they can't go nowhere else. They've got to come to me because I'm the only one showing it. So that clicked early doors. And then I thought, newer, more views, more subs, more comments. In turn, I can comment back. That was a stick out video for me because then I realised that game really works. And you'll see it now. There's certain reviewers new stuff, massive views, yet they put another video on or something that's been out for a while, might get a thousand. And that is, and that includes me. In all honesty, that includes me as well. Certain reviews, you might get a fucking 20,000 within three weeks. You could do it. If it's hot off at press, if it's not, then we're all as fucking famous as each other because people only search for figures while they're so old. That, that is something I worked out early doors. Um... Another video that stuck out in my mind, the Terminator 2 T1000, and I actually filmed this one downstairs with the first one, and I had delivered it one of the first things I'd received that got a damaged package, and it was banged into fucking corner. And I basically did it the night it came, and I remember filming it, and I sort of did what I do in real life. I'm, I'm touchy, and I'm quick-tempered at times. Not always, because I, I can be the fucking best laugh you want to know, but sometimes I am touchy, and I'm fiery, and I'm fucking... Aggressive, sometimes overly aggressive. Not so much now, because I'm fucking growing out of it, but I were around that time. And this parcel had been banged to fault, and this parcel force had dropped it off, I've opened it, and it's fault. And basically, I filmed this video. And I'm scoring it, and I'm saying this, V, and this, and this is awesome, this is awesome. I got around to the packaging, I basically went off on this fucking run, and I said everything that I wanted to say. Parcel force are fucking arseholes, and blah, blah, blah. And I just went fucking 
I just went fucking balls out sort of thing. I just went fucking full tilt at Parcel Force. And then, as quick as the video went up, nearly every comment that come through, I'm glad you've said that, because I think that, and I'm glad you mentioned this, I'm glad you've said that, and that was funny as fuck. And then I thought to myself, what it? So I watch it back, I think, yeah, yeah, it were pretty funny, that. Yeah, I like how I've worded that. Yeah, I like that. And the more I realised, the more normal or natural or real I were, the more that people would... The comments wouldn't be about the figure no more. The comments would be about, oh, I like how you said that, and that was funny as fuck, and yeah, I feel that. And I thought, I feel like one at fucking gang now. I feel like I'm in accept I've been accepted because I'm saying things that they want to say. And then the funny thing starts happening is your views creep up, like I said. But then people start sending me questions, like I used to send Morris and fucking Dean and... Uh, Dino and fucking all the other guys I start getting questions like that and I'm thinking this is fucking weird because now do a guy called E. Kange 24-7 yeah, Emilio Garcia, I were friends with him on Facebook and I ain't heard fuck all from him in years and he used to send me questions at about quarter to twelve at night and I'd be getting up at six next morning and I'd sit in bed on my fucking laptop and I'd type answers back to him until about two in the morning not because I fucking overly cared about which figure he bought next or whatever but I just thought it's the right thing to do he's taking his time to message me and I'm helping him out but the things he was saying it really respectful oh thanks for your time sir and I, I know that's kind of an American thing people will say that and they don't mean sir as if you're the senior but the things he asked me made me feel like he really valued my opinion and then I started thinking hold on I'm going from newcomer now to established YouTuber so to speak and that is how it grew, like I say, a combination of early figures and constantly changing the style. I went, I upgraded the camera after so, uh, some time, I upgraded the display, I went and bought the two DTOFs from Ikea and the, uh, I think the Deoda lights, uh, set them out well and also realised different tricks like uh, in your reviews, use multiple poses, it stops it getting boring for the viewer try and cut in some film or cut in some music and then sometimes like I'll watch a review and it's got music in I think fucking hell Avengers tune again fucking give me a break or fucking hell Moran Zimmer fucking kill me now and that sometimes music works sometimes it don't and I think the more inventive you are with your music better it is for me personally but like I said I tried things and then I got to a point where I'm thinking well I need a better camera I need better lighting, I need this, I need that, I need a turntable. And I'm just trying to fucking evolve and evolve and evolve. But I realised that you can only get so far with reviewing alone. Because you could be a good reviewer, but you could be the biggest fucking dick in the world and people just will not like you. You could be boring as fuck and people just won't gravitate towards you. So then in my mind I'm thinking, I did two things really. One I'm proud of, one I'm not. The first one, I am proud of. I tried to involve everybody, newcomers, old timers, fucking people who I consider bigger than me, people I didn't consider to be established at all. I tried to include everybody and treat everybody equally and just say, come on, come and join in, do this, tell me a thing, make them feel like they're my best mate in the world just by typing stuff to them like, yeah, fucking hell mate, that is awesome. And in my mind I'm thinking, yeah, I've seen fucking Batman figure three million times, but thanks for sending me a picture. but. For when I want to censor me saying, and I think to me, I think to him, to the guy sending that, this him sending me this picture means fucking world to him. Yeah, I've seen the Batman in every pose conceivable, but if he sends me that picture and I send him back, yeah, I've done that pose me saying, he's gonna feel the other end like, oh fucking cheers, clip of your fucking wanker. If you say fucking hell, mate, that is awesome. I like how you've just got his fins and his gauntlet t turned right. Oh, that's fucking beautiful. And me telling you now, it might come across as not genuine, but there's also tact and, and generosity, a sort of, I'm making it, I'm making him feel like he's my best mate and he's telling me something I don't know. To do that, that person's on the other end thinking, fucking hell, that's awesome, let, let me take another photo. And they rip 50 photos off and send them you all. And if you turn around and say, fucking hell, have a minute now, he said, then you're a prick. But if you say, fuck me, cheers mate, thanks for taking time and sending me them photos, much respect. Thanks for your support, blah, blah, blah. That person not receiving ends going to be like, fucking hell, clippers all right. So a month down the line when people are saying, who do you watch on YouTube and who do you support and do you agree with anybody's reviews? They're going to think, 
fucking clippers all right he fucking spoke to me about them pictures i sent yeah yeah watch that so in turn it's networking and like i say i just just tried to come across like that because i like the feeling i got when dean and morris did it to me and that's why i tried to do that i also tried to get involved in everything such as the uh figure count dance i did it with dean and morris again it well fucking it's good because by association you like saying Oh, we're a little gang. We're fucking brothers together, us three. And if you fucking, if you will one of us, you will all of us. And it was that sort of thing. And then I did a countdown, invited fucking everybody, every name I knew, basically involved. And luckily they all said yeah. And collectors massive compared to me, and people with a lot more subscribers and a lot more fucking views. Yeah, we'll come on it, clip. Thanks for asking us. And then you cut it together, and it is work, but it's worth it. And you put it out, and I got involved with that, and giving to causes, Mike's. Uh, Christmas collection, collections when we bought collections with a guy who wanted the fucking Iron Man Mark 7 and he got that uh, disorder. Just getting involved and basically not being a prick and that's what I did, I got involved. And that's the thing I'm proud about and I still try and do it now although I find that when I feel down myself I find it harder to do that, I find it harder to motivate myself. When I'm up and I'm buzzing and I'm collecting and I'm at full speed I fucking love it. Sometimes when I'm down, like I have been recently, I think I can't be doing with it. It's like work. It's like a job away from work. And that is the peaks and troughs that I do feel. The thing I'm not proud about, what I did do, when I sort of started getting established, I start, first off, the first rant really at a person individual were at Loyal Variable. And the video, if I remember it rightly, put a video on saying, if you subscribe to me and you leave a comment, I will give you this free, I think it was a bag or a book or something like that. And then I'm reading that comments and all these guys, and I'm not mentioning no names because I can't really remember any, but I read down these comments. Yeah, I've subscribed, I've subbed and I've liked your video. Can I have that free bag or can I have that free book and blah, 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 and all down. And then I went back through his videos, probably five videos back, and the same guys had commented to him and he never answered one of them. And I thought, Someone just struck a nerve with me because I thought, hold on a minute. At that time, I looked back from my videos and I might have got 20 comments a video and everyone were answered without fail. Fucking everything. Even if it were, thanks a lot, mate. Thanks for your support. Everyone were answered. And I then put a video up saying, if you're begging for them bags and that book, you're subscribing to a person and sending comments knowing that you ain't going to comment back to you, then you're a fucking little mug. This is what I said in this video. And that were my honest opinion, and that is why I said it. Looking back, I think to me saying I shouldn't have said it, and I shouldn't have said it for a lot of reasons, because it was first, it was first time I really got involved in drama that weren't I didn't really need to. And also, I do regret it because Loyal Variable were a good collector, and I had a lot of respect for him. Although I didn't like the fact that he sort of dismissed my comments, and that is, and I'd seen it had happened. Yet these guys were still blind to it and still wanted to subscribe for these fucking free books and bags. And I thought to me, send fucking mugs, beggars. And I said it, and I thought a lot of people agreed, and a lot of people who put comments on his video took them off. I noticed, and then they come back and say, "Oh, you were right what you said." I took them down, and I thought, oh, I fucking, I, I kind of like this little bit of fucking power gone to me fucking head. I can sell what I want, and I don't be two fucks about who says what back. And that went to me head, and then another one. That was really the first time I got into a drama or a conflict with anybody. And then round about the time I started doing figure time, uh, question time, uh, somebody sent me a comment and I still remember it, still remember the comment and I still remember who sent it. And I will mention this one and the reason I'm going to mention it is because I went back and apologised to him after because I was bang out of fucking order and I don't mind saying it. In fact, I was a prick about it. And if I'd have been a prick to me doing it, then I'd still be ripping me up now. Um, the guy was called Custom Fig. And anybody who's followed my channel, they'll fucking remember this fucking debacle because I was fucking... I sort of got caught in a moment where I think I can rant and I can make this funny as fuck. At somebody's expense, I can just fucking rant and rave for an hour and belittle this fucking, never took into account his fucking language, never took into account his age, never took into account his financial status. And his question basically were, why can you afford so many hot toys, yet you can't afford a good camera or whatever? And that were it, something like that. And I thought, 
little bastard. So I went, followed his name, went to his channel, and he was reviewing a Marvel Legends Hulk figure. I remember it's fucking, sorry, Marvel Legends Beast figure. I fucking remember it. And it was used. He bought it, he bought it off an eBay seller and not come packaged or else. And I watched it and I thought, little cunt. I'm thinking, ah, Callum's got that under his bed collecting dust. Yet he's saying to me, you can afford these hot toys, get a better camera. And I took it that it was an aggressive comment from him to me. And I thought, fuck this, he's not talking to me like that. So I went, ah, oh, I put this video out. And I, I basically belittled him, belittled his collection, belittled everything about him. And he's, I think he sent me a comment or whatever and said I didn't mean no offence and blah, blah, blah. And I then I went back and I looked at his channel again. And I listened to a couple more of his videos and I thought, fucking... I listened to his speech patterns and realised he weren't very old. And also, I think he were... I don't think he's... He spoke good English, but his, um, his English grammar, as I could explain, was sort of lacking. Whereas, like, you know, if you get a comment from a foreign subscriber and they don't quite type it right, but you can... If you look at it, if you take a like wider view and you look at it, you think, ah, oh, I know what he means. I did... That's how it came across, and the more videos I watched, I thought, this is a fucking kid, he's probably, he's probably not even out of school, and he's fucking set, he's collecting Marvel Legends, and he's probably asked me in an innocent way, yeah, I've acted like a total and utter fucking prick, and I was fucking embarrassed by me saying, and it were fucking, it were like a stamp on my channel, were like, you prick, you become what you fucking hate, which is a bully, and a fucking, an arsehole. And the video, I think I took it down soon after. Although, I did get a lot of comments saying that was funny as fuck and that what you did with Beast and Hulk figure. I basically set the Marvel Legends Hulk figure up, bumming Beast figure. Just for cheap laughs, really. But I was really disappointed in me saying after. Uh, I think I took it down and apologised. And around that time, I think I got about 300,000 views and I deleted every video I'd done. I thought, fuck this. I thought I didn't get into it for this. And I did get sort of, I had become a drama queen and a bit of a fucking, I don't know, big mouth bastard, I suppose. Um, so I did, I deleted all the channel, I thought, fuck this, didn't get into it for that. And then you go away and then I got messages, why have you fucked off? I was enjoying your films, bring them back. And then you, you step away from it and you miss it and then you come back and then you start again. And I thought, right, fair enough. Which then, over time, led me into what I would class as Skype era. Whereas the community were moving forward, you were sort of you were sort of in little clicks, and I suppose it's still the way now. You look at figure talk, and it's same ten guys most of the time. I know we're trying to bring in new guys, and but you find the same names pop up all the time, and it sort of got. If I align myself with these guys, then everybody knows I'm down with these. And what we used to do is we'd go on Skype, and obviously Skype is basically an open phone call. There'd be a lot of us, a lot of. UK collectors, a couple of guys from Canada, a couple of Americans, and we just sit and we talk and we chat shit. And if I'm honest, we'd slag people off, and we'd we'd mock other people. Although because it was in private, it seemed okay to do. But that led me then into a situation where I was aligned with certain guys, and these were good guys, and I'm sure they're all still good guys. But I'm like just trying to be honest with and reflect on what um, what me YouTube has been, sort of thing. YouTube life has been and I sort of I moved into one group and sort of that pulled me away from another group I think um, because if you're in a group and one of your group don't like somebody in another group you sort of you've got to nail your colours to the mast and that's sort of how I brought up as well and I did I aligned myself with this group which very quickly sort of descended into like I said a lot of piss taking and then an incident sort of popped up where a guy from outside the group had a go at a guy from inside the group and then obviously I wanted to be seen to be supporting him and then I had to go back and forth and then pretty much got known as being a fucking drama queen for about six months, maybe a year. And and just arguing with anybody, really for anything, which well, looking back I think what a fucking mug because I've always sort of spoke for my sin yet I found my sin defending other people, which I shouldn't have done because I was going against other people who I didn't really know. Uh, and to name names, I'll name names. Carlos, I had a running with Carlos, where it, that was more a situation where somebody had come to me and said, Some check out a video, somebody's mocking you. And I don't want to mention that person's name, but it did come to me. And this is by the time I got the uh, Clipper King on YouTube, uh, on Facebook. 
so I'm accessible, people could talk to me instantly sort of thing. Check it out, somebody's mocking you with video, so this links me this video and I watches it. And it were Mike Sohn and another guy you were cool with I don't really want to mention because I've, I've not heard from him in a long time, so. And again, I watched it and I thought, Fucking bastards, they're taking piss. And probably looking back, they weren't at all. I should have looked at it as a form of flattery, to be honest, because they were sort of mocking my accent and the terminology I was using, such as brothers. And I do, I've said this before, the Clipper King is a character, it's like an overextension of me, the real person, and I will, what up, brothers? I, I wouldn't say that to no fucker, really, in real life. But it's sort of an opening catchphrase and, and an end of thing, and this is Clipper King. And I'm out of here. I can't. I fucking I haven't snapped my fingers since fucking eighties. But it just became a character on YouTube. And like I said, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna expect people to to quote you. I mean, you could look through everybody's um, openings. Even Carlos. I know you don't like me, but you like my style. If you wanted to use that to belittle a person, you could take that catchphrase and do something with it and send it back to them and sort of. And that is what I saw it as. Where <laughs> the more I look back, I realise it really weren't that. It was just sort of. Two guys sat filming and having a little rib at me. But I thought, I'm going to look like a twat here if I don't come back at that. So I did, I went back. And I went back fucking hard as well. I attacked my fucking big style. And in turn, the predominantly UK people sort of jumped on to defend me. And then Carlos jumped on to sort of defend Mike, as he would, because that was his friend. And it basically got blown out of proportion. And I do feel embarrassed about it. Although at the time I probably believed in what I said and I believed that they were attacking me. I feel now having spoke to him, and particularly through Figure Tall, I feel like I fucking, again, bang out of order. Not not 100% out of order as in it were all my fault. I, I'm not saying that, but I sort of I sort of aggressively defended myself when there was really nothing to defend against, which led into fucking a conflict and then a, a sort of a drama that erupted where people felt they got to take one side or another, which I never really, really wanted to become because I always wanted to just speak for myself. Like I said, and the thing is, or the sad thing about it is, that lasted probably six months where people are saying, oh, do you still not talk to this person? Well, I can tell you something about that person. I'm thinking, I don't give two fucks, really, because for me, it's done and dusted. I just want to get back to fucking reviewing these figures and not having nothing to do with people that I feel don't like me. And that is how I felt. But because you're elevated in a community, people feel that if they're telling you something, they're befriending you. And I'm thinking, you're trying to lead me in, down a path and you're trying to give me bullets to fire and I don't want to fire them. Yet I'm... I'm by not firing them, I feel like I'm letting you down, and that is how I let me say become. And the saddest thing here it is, I spoke to Mike Sona fucking through Skype on Figure Talk. <laughs> He's one of the fucking best blokes you could wish to mention, because he, his morals are fucking very like mine. He's very selfless. He's a good stand-up guy. He's a fucking family man. His opinion, although he's strong with his opinion, he does have an opinion which I respect. The fact if he didn't have an opinion. I'd respect him less. He does have an opinion. Sometimes it conflicts with mine. But the sad thing is, I just, I'd snapped and I'd gone, I'd gone at him. And I, looking back now, I feel like a fucking mug because it now makes me feel an hypocrite when I can sit and talk to him. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm thinking, fucking hell, I can't believe I carried off like I did with Mike because he's fucking sound. He's as much like me as I am. So I should have liked him from the start. And again, same with Carlos. I'd walk up to Carlos sort of, back in Mike, I'd watched Carlos's videos and his videos were very brash and in your face and like sort of took everything up a notch and I know that we're him creating his image but and that is how I thought he really were in real life so when he come out and start mentioning me in videos I'm like hold on a fucking minute newcomer let me fucking knock you down a minute and that's probably the that's probably the sort of that's probably how I went at him and now talking to Carlos you couldn't fucking wish to meet a better blog I would happily if I lived there or they lived there, I would happily go for a drink with both of them lads and sit there and I'd tell them my life story and fucking, you know what I mean, have a meal, fucking check their hands and be cool with them and even say, look, I'm sorry for my part in it. I know that they were as involved as I were, but I would happily sit down and say, look, I'm sorry for my part because I was led into this by somebody else and I felt like I had to defend myself to maintain my fucking to maintain my status in community where I was fucking naive really and I went, like I said I went at him and I fucking I'm embarrassed by it when I think about it now because like I said when I talk to Carlos I feel like I'm learning from him I know he's a little bit older than me and his collection's fucking massive but if there's stuff I want to know there's very few people I'll, say, I'll turn around and say oh so and so do you know do you know about that and they'll go oh yeah yeah I know that and, and, the, and also the other thing that's fucking great about both of them is 
they're so respectful that fucking more so than I am. I try and be respectful, but I am sort of brash and have an ego sort of coming through all the time. Well, these guys are humble and they'll set up. Yeah, yeah, cool. No. And even that, when that topic comes up, I'm not fucking... I'm just talking about it because people will remember this about my channel. When we talk about it now, that first to say, oh, no, it, it were cool, it, it's behind us, we fucking, we move on. And that first to say it, and I think fucking massive respect to them because had it not been through figure talk and through Skype, I suppose... It would have never been. It would have never been cleared up, and I'm glad that I'm glad that it did get cleared up because now, nah, like I said, I would happily phone call Mike and Carlos now. Nah. All right, how's it going? Oh, I just wanted to know so and so. Oh, what do you think of this? I'm thinking about buying this. What do you reckon? Oh, did you see that video? And I would talk to them for hours because I find them both interesting. And I find them both very respectful and both good family men. So that sort of brings to end a chapter on the conflict that I got through. So I'm not proud of that side of it. And again, that sort of brought to an end another sec another fucking stamp on my YouTube channel, so to speak. What we call the fucking drama period where I seem to be involved in everything. But again, then like last year when Mike did the uh, collection for Christmas, I jumped on it and were a little bit disappointed with people who didn't want to get involved. Again, shot my mouth off, lost a lot of friends or I lost a lot of friends for a short period of time. Uh, again, I, I did believe in what I said, but I probably said it wrong, looking back. Um, again, got me got a name as a fucking big mouth again. Uh, but I, ju I saw that Mike believed in it, and I fucking believed in it as well. And like I said, I, I did it as much to help Mike as I did to help the people that he was trying to help. Because I thought to me, saying, he's not asking for a lot financially. He's asking for about the same as I fucking spend on McDonald's most days, which I'm not proud to say, but that is the honest truth. I thought I can send him that money and tomorrow at work I'll not have my fucking Big Mac meal and my nine chicken nuggets. I thought it's about the same amount, I'll send it. But also what I can do is I can also bring other people that might not see Mike's channel and say, look, I'm doing this, please come and join us. And when it didn't happen, I just sort of got pissed off about it. But again, you live and learn. Uh... But yeah, that was another section of me thing. And then since that, I have tried to stay drama free. The only one, and most of you will know, I, I don't want to mention your name because I fucking, I, I don't know. I've said more than fucking enough, Od Odell. Like I said, my thoughts on him are still the same. I, if, he were, if I felt he were honest and if I thought he were genuine, then I would be more than happy to say, look, welcome back, so to speak. But until I feel that, I feel it hard to do that sort of thing. And I'm not going to fucking bash him because, like I say, again, I'd be fucking naive to think that he weren't a genuine guy like I've just said that Carlos and Mike turned out to be. But like I say, he just seems to be involved in everything drama-wise and can't let the drama go, which is, if you're like a recovering drama queen like me sort of thing, I don't need other drama queens around me. So, But like I say, I don't hate him. I fucking rib him because he's easy. But I don't hate him. I'm sure he's a good guy, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of his perceived overconfidence become comes really from low self-esteem. He could probably tell me I'm wrong. I don't know, but like I said, I've got to mention him because he's been as much a part of my channel as other guys I've mentioned. But like I said, I've pretty much tried to stay uh, drama-free for about a year now. I think I'm doing quite well. So. Moving on to other things you might want to know collection-wise. Let me have a little look first. Let's get me... Let me get my shit together. So, if I can get to my comments. Burn. And these are some guys who asked me comments, like I said, through Facebook. Vince Los Angeles. I'd like to know how many pies it took to get that second chin. To be honest, I'm not a massive fan of pies. That chin is a combination of being 40 years old. To be honest, I went to a gym on a free day last Sunday and I ate for about three days after. But I get a feeling now, Vince, if I were to lose weight, I would sag. My skin would sag. If you look at my face, nah, I am 39, but I am still pretty fucking, I'm pretty handsome. I'm just fucking about. I just think, Vince, if I lost too much weight at minute and I didn't do it right, I think that I would get a lot of wrinkles and my face would sag. But like they say, there's no wrinkles on a balloon. So I think if my face stays fat, I'll look younger. 
So that answers your question. And I'm not particularly keen on pies, but I do like Chinese food, I do like Indian food, and I do like McDonald's and KFC. So if you ever want to apologise for your smart comments, Mr. Los Angeles, and fucking take me out for dinner, keep that in mind. Mr. Wyman Shim. This is what I'm going to talk about in all in a minute. Sellers. Wyman Shin, who obviously is the owner of uh, 1-6 Bros. I know what Clipper eats for lunch on a daily basis, and the reason he knows that is because he's more than welcome to visit me anytime he wants. He comes up to my work regular, normally on a Monday, drops his missus off to go shopping or brings Maggie with him. Sometimes bring me figures, sometimes come to collect figures. He's a fucking awesome guy and an awesome seller, but I will get around to UK sellers in a minute. Because it's going to be a long video, but fuck it. You don't have to watch it in one in one go. You've been wanting Clipper King back for a while, and I'm fucking treating you, you jammy bastards. So, yeah, he knows what I have for lunch because he sat with me the other day when I was eating my lunch. Or, I don't know if I was eating it. I can't remember if I was eating it. I'm probably picking up some chips or something. I don't know. So, yeah, Wyman comes up for a drink. Uh, and then Vince Los Angeles says three midgets and an Ewok. I think that's what he's saying I eat. I'm not that big. I'm 15 stone. I'm 5 foot 10. I'm 15 stone. And ideally, I would like to be 13. When I used to box from being about 17 to... you I say used to box like a fucking Muhammad Ali. I used to go boxing training uh, and have a few fucking sparring matches like at amateur level, probably from being about 19 to about 22. Ideally, with my physique in shape, from my build, I would like to. I was then about 12 stone, and I was fucking ripped up muscle. I was beautiful. Then, as I got older, I found kebabs and fattening food. I started working nights and started progressively putting weight on. I got up to about 15 stone, which I think's heaviest I've been. Now I think I'm between 15 and 15 and a half stone. I would like to be 13, but I'm 5'10". Um, so I have been eating midgets and Ewoks. And to be honest, midgets I understand don't like to be eaten the people at the end of the day, the little people. They don't even like to be called midgets, Vince Los Angeles. So if you're going to send me uh, comments yet, try and be politically correct. Ewoks, on the other hand, do like to be referred to as Ewoks. Or uh, mini Wookies. You can call them mini Wookies. They don't mind that. <laughs> I don't know. Leon George Lawrence. Uh, just how did you get into collecting? That would be a cool video. Oh, I think I've more than explained how I got into collecting. I was always a collector. Other things I do collect is I collect aftershaves, and I think I've probably got about 50 lots of aftershave or older toilets. My favourites probably being, and if you do like aftershaves, check these three out. Pick your scent up some Chanel Allure for men, because that is beautiful, and that... That has the power to actually snap knicker elastic because if you put some of that on and you're at work and a young female walks past, the pants normally fall straight down. So that's Chanel Allure. Get on that. That's beautiful. Another one, Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. It's hard to get hold of. It's about 75 quid for 100 mil. And again, that is beautiful. And it's one of them. You know, when somebody walks past, they're like, what are you wearing? I say, I'm wearing Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. They're like, oh, fucking hell, that is really nice. I say, yeah, I know. You, you've got to expect that when you're dealing with Uncle Clipper, you know what I mean? I've got to smell fresh. And another one to recommend you, I would say... Ah, mm, uh, Callum's... Uh, Amanda Gildo, um, Zenya, Womo, that's not a bad one. But also I like D&G The One for men, that's beautiful. So I do collect aftershaves and I've got a decent Blu-ray collection going on at the minute. So, yeah, there are other things I collect. Clive O'Sullivan, your tips on making a nice cuppa would be handy. You could also steam a coat in the meantime. Now, I get a little feeling that this is a piss tech. Now, Clive, I do make a nice cup of tea, although Wyman will fucking disagree with you. Because I made him a drink over day at work, and as quick as I was trying to make it, he's fucking scooped his sugars out. I'm sure he asked me for two sugars. I put him two sugars in, and he's fucking got a spoon out of my hand, and he's fucking digging them out. I'm like, Wyman, back off, yeah? I'm trying to make a fucking cup of tea, my friend. But when Clive's been up to see Uncle Clipper, I made him a drink and he likes it. On steaming coats, I do steam. In fact, let's have a little look into the fucking collection box, eh? Stuff, fabrics and that, when you get them, you know when they come out of the box and you've got fucking creases all over you, you're not keen. You think, oh, fucking, I don't like how that is. I did it with Colby, uniform, I did it with this bitch the other day. Get a bit of hot steam about it, yeah? Get them fucking shoulders pressed down and get some nice pleats down his back. That's what you want. Get a bit of fucking organisation back into your cape. So I do use steam from tea kettle. Simply because it's not like using a steam iron where you can actually burn out. And also, 
it's, it's just flexible. What's worst it's going to do, it's going to wet it, yeah, and it'll cool straight down. So get a bit of, get a bit of steam around your figures, yeah? It's the future. So that answers that question. That was from Clive O'Sullivan. Guy, actually, I've signed a few figures, bought some figures off me, and I've signed them in, so... He's a big fan of Uncle Clipper, so respect to him. Seth Stoneberger. All hail the return of the king. Right, this is a fallacy about uh, return of king. Uh, I know it is, obviously, a play on words. Um, people say, if I'm not putting a video up every week, I've gone away. It's not the case, I just like a fucking break. I've got people texting this phone fucking regular, and I just sometimes I want to fucking smash my own head in and just take a step off. So that's what I've done. Right, Chris... YS Carts, uh, with a number of movie scene, uh, movies and sequels, Marvel Studios are pumping out in the next three or four years. Retirement has to be postponed, Uncle Clipper. So I think he's basically saying, when everything comes out Marvel and superhero-wise, I'm going to jump on it. To be honest, I want to slow that shit down because I've got a cabinet full of superheroes, most of who I don't even fucking like. So that's honest truth for it. Um, Vince Los Angeles again popped up. 12 quid on McDonald's isn't much these days. I think you're telling porkies. Well, I'm not telling porkies. Ask Uncle Wyman, because he saw me bag full of food the other day. Uh, and I think there were only about a tanner's worth in that. But anyway. Stuart Hall. Yeah. I got into collection. Uh, what made your review? I've explained that. Your opinion... Your opinion on the most overrated figure and most underrated figure. Would you collect anything else if you weren't collecting figures? Like I said, after shaves, I'd probably go out a little bit more if I didn't collect figures. Um, used to collect football kits for our Callum. Um, I don't know, I'd be collecting summer, but I don't know what. What would be track time be on Top Gear? Uh, if I did it now, I'd be pretty slow because I don't drive fast at the minute. Having kids slowed me right down. And to be honest, I fucking hate driving because I used to do it for a living. Uh, when I was younger... Pretty quick, not a bad driver, I'm not, not had many crashes, but I, I don't know how I would know that, because I don't know distance at track, so. Would I have a wager on Liverpool winning Premier League, not this season, but maybe, maybe next? Although, when we tonked Arsenal all the day, oh, that was beautiful, I do love that. All you Southerners, fuck you. Um, that video would be good to watch. Right, most underrated figure. Fucking hell, underrated. I don't know. In my opinion, I would say Indiana Jones. In fact, I would say Indiana Jones or this uh, DX13 Joker. Because they're both good figures. I, like. I mean, I tinkered with mine, repainted face a bit, sweated it up, dirtied it up a bit. And I do really like that figure, although I know it gets no love in community. So Indiana Jones would be one underrated figure. And this Joker. This Joker here, the mind Joker, is... Got a better head sculpt than the uh, normal version of Joker, in my opinion. Watch the review if you haven't seen them now, but they're both underrated figures. Overrated figures. <clears throat> Fucking hell. Possibly Hulk. Um, it is good, it's imposing, but it's pretty much what you see is what you get. That's kind of overrated. Um, Fucking hell. Overrated. I think some of them early Predators were a bit overrated. One of the worst figures I got were the Falcon of Predator. Just fucking took it out of box, looked at it, and I thought, fucking shit. Uh, the Ivan Drago were a bad figure. Um, don't know, really. Because I'm, I'm looking at the collection I've got now. I mean, I've got about 44 figures at minute. Um, but I've probably had about 120 through here, something like that. Well, I don't know. It's an odd one, overrated and underrated, because I don't know what other people think about it. Damn, that's a lot of questions, says Chad Man. Um, do you use two-ply toilet paper? If not, why? Well, I do use two-ply toilet paper. Um, but I will say I do prefer to go for a shit when it's one of them that feels like it's been shrink-wrapped. So it's, like, covered in cling film. So when it comes out, it comes out nice and easy, and it doesn't leave no shit behind, so you're not going to be wiping for ten minutes. So <laughs> I hope that answers that question for you. But just in case, we do have, like, Charmin Ultra. So, yeah, uh, comfortable ass wipe. Uh, and they're having a bit of a two-way... Hold on here, boys. You're having, like, a two-way conversation, not including me, yeah? It's my Fred. Just fucking... When you're talking to Uncle Clipper on his Facebook page, yeah? Make sure it involves me. You're having a two-way conversation. You've cut me out. Anyway. 
Clive O'Sullivan again. Is it true you're on Pierce Morgan? Uh, to be honest, I probably should be. Because I've seen some guests that he's had on. I think, fucking hell, my life's more interesting than their bastards. But uh, he hasn't phoned me as yet. Mark Thomas. I think that's on Grown Ups, Mark Thomas. Could be wrong. But uh, if it is, respect to him because he's a good reviewer. Uh, if you give up collecting one six figures, what would you collect? Or would you collect something else? If so, what? Like I said, uh, aftershaves. I'd probably go out more. I'd probably... I don't know. I'd probably buy a better car at the minute. I'm fucking... I can't be arsed with cars. Yeah, sorry. Again, had to empty the uh, memory card. This film in quite high definition. This It does use a lot of space. Um... But yeah, like I say, if I weren't collecting, I'd spend my money elsewhere. I'd always blow my money. I'm only one of them. I fucking live month to month. I earn decent money. Not fucking loads. But uh, earn all right. So I'd probably, like I said, I would go, probably get a, a newer car or a better car or two cars. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. See, it's like I said before. Just um, I'll get back to these questions in a minute. Um, <clears throat> we're collecting. I'm not really addicted to collecting. I've always enjoyed collecting. I've always enjoyed opening stuff. And then I pose it and I clean it every now and again and repose it and I'll fucking film it again and blah, blah, blah. I do like doing the reviews when I can be arsed, but even reviews, they admit they're pissing me off basically because I've got these fuckheads in fucking top of cabin and that's where I review. Pretty much go freestyle and held in top cabinet because that's where the best lighting is. But because everything's in there, it means I've got to take everything out to review a figure to fuck about with it. So it puts me off it a little bit. But I'm looking into, if I do carry on reviewing, which I probably will because I do like the reviewing process. I'm looking at getting a light box, uh, uh, a lighting tent with some backdrops and some uh, proper photography lighting. So then I can just film on top of, if I can turn that out, I can, I can film the... Uh, on top of that, say fucking about with cabinet all the time. So, see Kobe and Jordan on there at a minute. So, yeah, um, I would carry on reviewing now. Um, collecting wise, I don't know, because, like I say, I really like to get this collection out of this bedroom. And I, I'm not saying I want to sell everything, because there's probably figures I can't ever see me parting with. And then the Batman just. Uh, interlude tell you in fact i'll tell you the figures i like in a bit um so yeah i would spend my money on other stuff but i would probably continue to review until i i don't know i've got to feel it that's the only thing sometimes i listen to my reviews back and i think i sound bored as fuck so if you're bored with your own voice what are others getting bored of? and you can actually hear me reviewing i'm like and this is i don't know this is the enter base scarface and it comes with and i'm like that and i think fucking hell how bored do you sound but anyway Moving on. Uh, I would like to know where you keep those Octoy slash Sideshow boxes and shipper boxes. Uh, a lot of people will know, watch the channel. All my outer boxes and shipper boxes are in massive boxes like that. And they're on a pallet at work on top level racking. So only anybody with a fork truck license can get to them. So yeah, I take them to work. Once a figure's reviewed. I will say as well, um, when I unbox a figure, I only open the box once because I take... I take everything out of the box, everything that's in it comes out and I put it into one of these airtight bags. You can see that's Jordan stuff. That's the MVP trophy. He's got two sets of shoes in there and all his hands. I put them into one of them and then I put that into a massive box that stays in house. So all my accessories and everything I would ever need from boxes here and I ain't got to open and close the box all the time. So I do do that. My boxes are at work on a pallet, like I say. So if you can put your boxes somewhere, that helps. I know a lot of people struggle to store the boxes, but I don't. Luckily, I work in a warehouse. Well, luckily, I'm supervising in a warehouse, so I can store them there. It don't cost me fuck all. Uh, and then Gary's wrote, uh, he puts them in loft, wall cavities, and under patio. No, I don't. I, like I said, they, they're on a pallet at work. Um, and somebody just sent me a question. Don't suppose you want a Loki, do you? No, thank you. Um, I recently sold Loki. I'll answer them in a bit. So while I've been on here, I've got a fucking shitload of notifications and a load of fucking more messages, but I'm not going to answer them while I'm doing this. Um, next subject I wanted to get to. 
Peter, question there, what would I do if I weren't collecting? Going on to that, I don't always see myself collecting. One of the recent ideas were sell up, sell everything. I worked it out and I, I sort of marked my prices down recently um, of what the going rate is. And when I do sell, most people will tell you, I sell at a fair price and I can be talked to and I can be talked down. I don't want to fucking rip nobody off, but I do also know what figures are worth. I work out that in here, uh, at minute, I think there's just shy of eight grand, I think, and that's if I get the price that these figures are worth. So obviously, I mean, like my Bruce Lee, is only one set, but it comes with a spare body and two spare outfits and shit like that. My Batman set does come with two, four Batmans, two Batman heads of Bruce Wayne head. The Tony May, uh, Tony May Ed conversion, two Tony May capes, a fucking Dark Spartan cape. So I know that's worth more than fucking 200 quid of anybody's money. Me Enter Bay Batman, I know that's around about 300 quid. Me Hulk, I don't know, probably 200 now, I don't know. But like I said, I think it's about 44, 45 figures there, so I don't know. If they were worth 200 each, then it'd be like fucking nine grand. But I think it'd probably be just under eight at a minute. Maybe less, because I know the Avengers figures have come down. But that's what it's worth. My idea were to sell that, put the money into something else, maybe have an holiday, maybe uh, put it towards a new car, maybe fucking decorate the room and get a massive telly. I mean, I've got a massive telly to start with, but I, I don't know. A new telly's always nice. So I thought about doing that, and then I thought, but then I'm out of community. And the honest truth at minute is, by being in the community and the views I get overnight, I get about 2,000 views overnight, whether I put a video on or not, which I'm fucking blessed about, because like I said, it keeps my channel ticking over, and it also helps in a thing called AdSense, where all the monetized videos on my channel, every time they get watched, or <clears throat> every time the advertising appears on it, I do get a, an amount. That's up to about, just short of £100 a month, which obviously is like £1,200 a year which in turn is about $1,600 a year, which is fucking nice, and on top of your already income, it sort of pays you for doing it. Now, I don't do it for that money, but I think I'm at a place where I never lose subscribers, I only gain them. So I think I never lose views now, I only gain them. So I think just by being here, my channel being open, putting a review on every now and again, putting an upload on every now and again, it might get views, will help, and will keep that £100 a month coming in. So I think, why not stay in community? I've, it's took me fucking five years to build to where I am now. Why not reap the rewards of being who you are sort of thing or who you are in community? So I, I probably always would be around it. Am I going to be churning out reviews constantly? Probably not because, like I said, I don't have enthusiasm for it all the time. Uh, maybe come summer or when I'm off work, I might fucking fire it up and like I've done before. I go out and wait space for fucking two weeks, like 14 new figures and can't wait to review them and fucking repose them and everything for you. So you never know, you never know where I'll be. Uh, but like I said, I'm always conscious of it because if I do have a break, then people will message me. They'll be like, where have you gone? I'm like, well, I ain't gone nowhere, I'm just having a minute. They're like, well, have you retired? No, not really, but I might do. No, you can't. You've got to come back. And then you come back, and then others will be like, fucking drama queen, why did you have to tell anybody you were going? And I think to myself, I can't win. If I go, try and go quietly, I, I ain't told no, but I'm sneaking off. If I make a big song and dance, say, Ray, don't contact me for fucking three months. I want some time off. And it's like, look at that bragging con. He's fucking bigging his scent up, feel he's got to retire. Who's he think he is, Michael Jordan? It's not the case. I just don't know the best way to not be around. So... That sort of explains where I am at the minute. And like I said, I do fucking love the respect I get and the fucking love I get in community. Like I said, I've mentioned in other videos, when on on the on the best forum, I think the best 1-6 forum is not Sideshow Freaks. It's fucking... Sideshow Freaks is too censored. The admin are fucking power hungry. The fucking arseholes a lot of time. Dark Lord Dave can fucking kiss my ball sack. Um, I said I'd take him or leave him I don't I don't see what he brings to Oak so why should I respect him sort of thing um, whereas Mark OSR 16 Republic on Facebook that is the forum to be in so when in the 16 in uh, the 16 Republic somebody pops up and says who's your favourite reviewer or whose reviews do you watch religiously or whatever however the questions asked for me to get named among other great reviewers who I think and 
a lot more than some of the other ones who I think are fucking better than me or comparable to me. For me to be uh, to be mentioned, I'm like fucking hell. Why walk away from that? I'd be fucking stupid because there's people, fucking hundreds of people. I would think now there's more reviewers now than there's ever been. Would swap places with me or swap channels with me in a fucking heartbeat. And on top of that, to to get the money, like I said, hundred quid a month's not massive, but it's fucking hundred quid a month. So, like I said, I'd be stupid to fucking walk away. And like I said, when I were thinking of selling the collection, I thought, well. I can leave a flow in my PayPal account. I'll leave a thousand pound in my PayPal account, and what I do every release that comes out, whether it's a figure I want or not, the Predators, the Robocop, the this, the that, the fucking, the Enter Bay stuff, the Hot Toy stuff, the Three Zero stuff, everything. What I'll do, I'll order it, I'll review it day I get it, I'll fucking do an honest review, I'll let that review make money, and then I'll sell that figure. So I'll always have a thousand pound flow in my thing, and that way I'm getting big views because I'd be first to be reviewing it. And it would keep the AdSense money ticking over as well. That would be an idea. But then I think, are you buying just to review? And like I say, I'll go backwards and forwards. I don't know. But anyway, that's pretty much where I were. Um, age again does come into it. I don't want a bit fucking old is swinging in town. I know there's a lot of people older than me or as old as me. And it doesn't seem to bother them. So I don't know why it bothers me. But I don't know. I don't know. See, before people used to say, you fucking geeky as fuck, why are you doing that? You don't seem like a geek. And I think to myself, what is a fucking geek? And then I think, can't you be a cool bastard like myself and be into geeky things? If you're into geeky things, are you a geek? And I, I, I disagree with it. And, and like I say, I don't know what a fucking geek is. A stereotypical geek with glasses and fucking braces and nerdy things walking around with a comic book in hand. Is that a geek or is he just into certain things that others aren't? I don't know. Like I say, I've always been into fucking Star Wars and things that would be considered geeky, but I, I don't find them geeky. And like I say, I think by being what I think is fucking more than normal, I'm into Call of Duty, I'm into fucking FIFA, I'm into football, I'm into fucking, I'm into what I want to be into, music. I'm up to date with bands and films and fucking everything, so I don't consider myself a geek and I just think, can you take a geeky thing and make it cool? And I think, I, I do think I've gone some way to do that, so... And again, I'm not bigging me sent over. I'm just trying to be fucking honest with my thoughts. Um, right, let's talk about sellers. Move on to sellers. <clears throat> Those of interest, listen up. And I'm going to first off start off by saying, like I said before, I did know a lot of the uh, Hong Kong sellers on first name terms. I'd always, if I'd message them, uh, hello, my friend, it's Rick. Uh ask them, tell them what I wanted them to do for me, could they do it, and if they couldn't do it, how close could they get, and like, I get a report going with them, they found that they were selling to me outside of eBay, bringing the prices down, or they throw me in free MS shipping, or they make sure they marked it up right, and so on and so forth. So I did that, I uh, I basically used them exclusively. Then a few years ago, looking for the original Predator one, it was one of them figures, it was the only Predator I were interested in. I thought to me, saying, I fucking really want that. I, I don't know what to expect, but I really want it. It's the only Predator I want. And I looked and it come out. When they come out, I opted for Dutch, which were a figure that I thought, that is an overrated figure, thinking about it. I fucking hated that figure. The arms on that figure, I wanted to fucking snap them off its shoulder and fucking throw them somewhere. I hated them. And like I say, I never give no love to that figure in anybody's collection. I know Rhino's got one that's been modded or customised or whatever and I still don't love it, that's the honest truth, no love for it at all. Another one as well, another two I've just thought of and this is no disrespect to Chad man at all because I do consider him a friend now, the War Machine, the, the die cast War Machine, I'm no love for it at all, I think it's an ugly figure, I'm sure it's well made and everything else but I just can't deal with it and the Samurai Predator, I can't see no fucking point to it at all. It's pretty much a statue to me, and it's it's reference is non-existent. That's my thoughts. So, if somebody who asked me what overrated figures are, I would say them, and I'm sorry to anybody who's got them figures and love them, but I've got to be honest. They're my thoughts on that. Um, what, what are I saying? Yeah, so anyway, I wanted the original Predator, and I knew the problems with it. I knew its hair was too short. I knew it fucking it was inaccurate in certain ways, and I knew it got its strong points, and blah, blah, blah. I searched and searched and I found one on eBay and the price had gone from fucking roof for this stage. Like I said, I got the Dutch and I left Predator and I should have got Predator and left Dutch. But anyway, I decided I wanted it. I'd got some money and I looked around and I found one on eBay. Sent the guy a message. Uh, 
he got it actually for buy now or best offer and I put an offer in and he got it for just over £300 I think and I sent a best offer about 270 270 and the reason I did that is because I'd also bought the DX2 Batman as well same week and anyway come back to me no I can't do it for that I can't get down to the I'm like look what can you do it for I, I tell you now I can't afford 300 odd pound what it goes for on shipping and blah 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 I can't do that but I definitely want it I'm interested I can pay you I bought via fucking PayPal before I know how that works and blah 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 what can you do anyway the guy comes back he says I can get it down to you 280 quid and that's shipped and I thought well, it's only just of what I said when you include shipping I thought fuck it I'm gonna so anyway he says this is what I'm gonna do and we talked the deal through and he pretty much explained to me you were gonna send me a invoice through because I I think I'd just sent the money before I'd never been invoiced but I suppose the invoice protected us both anyway sent me the thing I got this predator unboxed it it came as it were and fucking awesome figure one of the figures that I buzzed most about on opening it it just fucking blew my mind when I saw it I didn't realise they could do predators to that fucking that specification I just thought it was fucking awesome the reason I tell that story is because the guy that did that was how I met Lee Ward he was selling, he'd got a store, although I'd never been to it. I got in contact with Lee Ward through a buy now or best offer. And he was fucking awesome with me. Helped me through it, sent me the thing, dead rate. Sent it as quick as he said he would and it come. Awesome condition, as he said, and it fucking on and on. Of the time, I built a uh, relationship with him, talking to him regular. <clears throat> and... Like I said, every figure he's ever sent me, be it if I've bought it or if it's something he's shipped me to review and to send back, has always been mint condition. And I trust him fucking like he lives next door to me. Like, that's how I feel towards him. I fucking, I tell him out and I know it won't come out. He tell me out and he knows I won't say fuck all to anybody. Um, that's, that's how it is with him. And like I say, sound met him in London face to face and there's a chance I'm going to meet him or I'm going to see him soon. But to be honest, he's, I think he came up a couple of weeks ago up this way and I can't remember why I didn't meet now. I fucking tied up with summer anyway as, as paths never crossed. But like I said, he lives that far away. It's not convenient to see where Wyman on lives about 40 minutes down motorway so I can see him regular. But anyway, that's like I said, how I met Lee Ward and never had a bad word heard about him and never would have a bad word said about him and I would support him like I was selling the stuff myself. If saying that, if if I'd heard he'd shipped something wrong or he fucking not listed something as a word, then I'd be like, hold on here, Lee. My reputation is now fucking tied in with yours like that. So, like, my mine would is, I, I wouldn't do something to affect his business. I'm sure he wouldn't affect me vouching for him sort of thing. And that's why I do vouch for him, because I trust him fucking 100%. So, like I said, the good, the bad and the robots online or Lee Ward from Facebook is a fucking top youth and he's a proper brother of mine. He's fucking awesome and he's looked after me and in turn for that I've showered his name out to fucking rooftops because if nobody else in this country ever sells out, the three guys I'm going to tell you, two in particular if I'm honest, um, the, guy, the two I'm closer to, um, but the three guys I'm going to tell you, I support them no end and like I said, they've looked after me. The second guy... Um, and I'll tell you the story how I met these. I I wanted the Blitzway Scarface when it first came out and I'd left it and left it. And if you remember, the Blitzway Scarface had been advertised for fucking ages and it didn't seem to be coming out. Anyway, I'd never pre-ordered it. I was waiting and the date were pushing back and I'm thinking I can order it direct from Blitzway, which were my intentions. When it come out, I couldn't. And I thought, fuck. They told me I got to see an official vendor. The only official vendor I knew were 1-6 Bruce Wyman. Now... I knew of Wyman, I knew 1-6 Bruce. I knew 1-6 Bruce mainly because Adino were getting nearly all his stuff there. And the thing that stuck out about him were that he it he'd did awesome packaging. Everything, he was like, it's fucking bulletproof when it comes in. He always used the same thing, very similar, and it was always wrapped up similar with fragile tape. So I did know of 1-6 Bruce. I'd also seen when Wyman was selling the uh, old Enter Bay, um, Enter the Dragon figures, they did the... A version and B version, I remember he had them for sale for quite a long time, but they are expensive, and when I looked, I remember seeing Derby, and I thought, fucking hell, it's not too far away, I'd go down to his shop and have a look, not realising they were an online seller. So anyway, 
he was the only guy who could get the blitz way in. And I spoke to Dino, and like I said, I've always had a good relationship with uh, Dean last. So I sent him a message, and I'd actually heard leading up to this, and I'm not going to drop nobody in shit and say where I'd heard it from, but I'd heard that if you bought from One Six Bro, certain collectors got preferential treatment. That's what I'd heard. Nah. <laughs> Looking back, it's a fucking, it's a funny one, because I think sometimes I've had preferential treatment since, but at the time, I didn't see it as fair, because I looked at it and thought, well, hold on, my money's as good as any fucker else's, so... I don't, I don't like that idea. But anyway, that is what I'd heard. But me being me, I thought, well, I do want to buy it, and I hope it will sell me one. But at the end of the day, I don't want to, I don't want somebody to be getting it sooner than me who's buying it at the same time, kind of thing. So that, so anyway, I spoke to Dean. I said, look, I want to buy from One Six Bros. We vouch for him. He says, yeah, he's a fucking awesome seller. Buy from him. So I says, right. And so I'm gonna, do. I'm sending a message and fucking explain who I am and tell him the situation. So anyway, the message going back, I think, fucking, how bullheaded with this. And I sent a message to Wyman basically saying, I it's Rick from Clipper King, I want a Blitzway thing off you, yeah. I'll pay you up front, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I just want you to promise me when it comes into stock, I'll get one as quick as anybody else because I hear that you give certain collectors preferential treatment. So anyway, Wyman comes back and says, yeah, I know you are, you'll, you'll get it straight away. I know you review it and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've heard from Dino, you good guy, and this and other. I said, well, I just wanted to tell you straight because I don't want somebody else to tell you on grapevine sort of thing but this is what i expect if i'm going to buy from somebody anyway from fucking then on me and wyman get on like a fucking house on fire we talk on phone we send uh, whatsapp messages regularly and like i say comes up to work probably once a month and he's a fucking top youth and stuff he's lent me we're talking about him fucking fucking thousands of pounds worth of stuff he's lent me and like i say i think because he doesn't ship it he'll bring it up and then he'll collect it he's fucking he don't think oh parcel force are gonna fuck this up so like i say I, looking back, I'm embarrassed about message I sent him because it was like a little bit untrusting sort of thing or sort of questioning his integrity and I think, bang out of fucking order because now I know him, I think, why would I have even asked him that? So that is how I got to know why I'm at one sick bros and he's a fucking top youth and he's one of the best laughs you're ever going to get. So yeah, respect to him. And then I know Matt from Toy HQ, basically through Wyman, he put me in touch. Uh, I think Wyman sent me a message saying Matt from Twitch, I don't know if you know him, but he's interested in sending some figures where you reviewing me shout him out. So I said, yeah, and obviously I spoke to Matt a lot on phone, saw him down at London, and he's a top youth, so I went down to his unit in um, Nottingham a while back, spent some time with him, and he's a fucking top guy as well. Uh, but I'd said Lee and Wyman because I bought actually bought more from Lee and Wyman than I have from Matt, but I would vouch for all three of them because they are top youths. On top of that, and I don't want to fucking pour salt onto mother's basement Matt, this is as far as my link up with mother's basement goes i went to london last year and i was looking for the enter bay batman which is up there and i went to a few stalls mother's basement being first a young guy served me well a little bit nervous if i'm honest i was trying to get a price off him and couldn't get a straight price which fucking does my nothing i hate it with ebay sellers and i fucking hate it on facebook Somebody wants to sell something, yet you want a price off them, you can't get one. Or they give you a price and like, well, could you do it for this or whatever? And they, they, they don't want to negotiate or they're scared to. Or Same when I'm selling something, they come to me and they say, how much do you want for that? I say, well, I was looking for 200 but I might take less. Oh, okay, what do you want to offer me? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I didn't really want to get that close. And I'm thinking, tell me how close you want to get, because I'll basically fucking let you have it for that price. But if they ain't got the bottle to say, I want to give you a fucking 170 for it, then I think, fuck yeah, I'm not fucking suggesting it to you. But this is what this kid were like anyway with Mother's Basement. Uh, I wanted her asking about the Batman and the um, Black Widow. And he's like, uh, well, I'd like this. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want to pay that. Can you take less for it? Uh, hold on, let me shout Liam. So he shouts Liam, what do you want on this? Well, I was talking to him. In the end, I just thought, fuck it, I've got no time for this. It's bullshit. I'm here to look around, not fucking stand here fucking bantering with you two fucking clowns. So anyway, I'm, I moseyed on. I met Lee and I met fucking Matt. I spoke to them. And then I got both the things I wanted actually from Matt. So that was the first link I had sort of with Mother's Basement. Following on to that, when I realised that... Uh, fucking, I forget her name now. Blondie. I fucking forget. Kate. <clears throat> Kate um, got in touch with her. She'd commented on... She commented on the link or something, and I commented also. And then I sort of sussed out that she was from Mother's Basement. And I said, 
some about I'd look for a Batman and I couldn't get it because I couldn't get a straight price and blah blah blah. And basically, I ain't got no fucking time for that. Uh, and left this comment basically saying, if you want any reviewing doing in future, uh, I do review for these other three guys. So anyway, I told her that. Anyway, she come back to me. Uh, you're on his radar. We have been watching your reviews. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. I thought, right, cheers. But sound. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, got into a conversation again. I can't remember who started it or what happened. Basically, I said, she was getting some shit and actually she said something about, I can't believe we work for this community or whatever, yet nobody respects us and you, we get all this shit and blah, blah, blah. So I, I felt a little bit for her because I felt she was being victimised a tiny little bit. So I sent her a message saying, look, this is my opinion. Take it if you want or don't. I feel that you get shit in this community and I feel that Lee done, I feel that Matt done and I feel that Wyman done because they are sellers of the people and by that I mean they're not constantly telling us how many followers they've got on Facebook, they're not telling us how much they sell, they're not telling us how much they spend on advertising, they're not telling us they've got this, they're making huge strides. I says, the people don't like that. I says, me personally, I don't like it. I said, but if that's how you want to go, I just feel it'd be honest to me to tell you my thoughts. I says, also, blah, 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 fucking on and on, this conversation went back and forth. She was like, well, thanks for your honesty. And then it got back around to reviewing for her, and she basically said, look, we're interested in using you to review. We have got some money to spend on advertising. We know that you are viewed sort of thing, but we're a little bit concerned about the swearing in your reviews. It's not really what we want to be linked to. So to that, I said my standard answer were, I review these figures for other blogs or other people who can afford these figures. Now, I don't know nobody who's eight year old who can afford a Not Toys figure. Maybe there is some out there, I just don't fucking know them. So I says, I review, like I'm telling my best mates outside of me in a pub, oh, this figure does this, this and this, and I fucking swear, and I said this, that, over. I don't give up. If you don't like that, then that's your thing, and fair enough, if your business don't want to be tied to it, then I can understand that. I'm not naive to think everybody's going to say, oh, yeah, Clipper, so what you fucking want? You talk about fucking paedophiles, rapists, and whatever, and we'll link that to our business. I'm not naive enough to think that, but I think, well, I want to talk, I want to talk, I don't want to be fucking censored, I, I want to say what I want to say. So I understood and I went, right, fair enough, that's it. I also got a bit of a inkling that she sort of were talking down to me or condescending a little bit and I thought, I couldn't work with her. I would, I would have, at that time, if she'd have sent me something to review or she'd have said, well, I'll knock you 20% off, there's an Hulk, review me that and you can pay me fucking 170 quid for it, then I'd have took it. But I think the relationship would have soured very fast because I didn't, I didn't connect to her with the other guys I did. And that is all I've got to say on Mother's Basement. Now, what's happened, I don't know. And I don't really have an opinion. I've got no money tied up with her. I don't really feel sorry for them as such because I think if they run the business right, then they won't have this problem. Uh, I do also think that us collectors are a little bit naive because I think that we sometimes think that these sellers, they can knock these prices down and they can sell them for fucking next to no and they'll give them us at wholesale prices it's total bullshit they don't make that much per figure i get it i kind of get the impression that if they are making a living standalone from figures they've got to be shipping some figures out so i don't think they're as fucking flush as we think they are but like i said that ain't come from any of them but i'm just saying i think sometimes we've got to cut them some slack and like i said i think when you when you do treat these guys. And remember as well the other thing, I saw Wyman got a lot of shit recently about fucking one of his figures, maybe it was Hulk, really long delays, maybe it was Spider-Man, I can't remember. And how quickly people turn, ah, oh, I fucking want my figure, and you think, hold on a fucking minute, he's explained to you here, he shipped it by another method, it's gonna be slow, if you want refunds, I think he'll refund your minus deposit, but cut them some fucking slack. They do work. All of them work on top of selling figures. So fucking, like I say, I think sometimes we're a bit naive to them. But anyway, that are my thoughts on the sellers, particularly the UK sellers. I massively support Lee Ward, Good, The Bad and The Robots, Wyman Shim at uh, 1-6 Bros, and Matt at Toy HQ. So other than that, uh, I'd say stay clear, because, well, I would say stay clear. I know there's other good ones, Kit Bash Collectibles and... A couple of why so serious but i ain't used them so i'm not going to recommend them so uh that's it on that figures wise people will always say what's your best three figures i'll tell you my favorite three figures in collection at the minute i would say it is still the dx12 batman mm. 
that DX13 battle damage on is a fucking badass. And then it's close at minute, because of novelty value, probably between Superman and Jordan. I think they're really nice figures, and I'm going to review them sometime soon. That Superman's fucking really, really nice. Um, if I were to sell three figures from collection soon, what would they be? I would say... Uh, I don't like selling DX figures, but I would say close to getting sold is Luke Skywalker because it fucking bores me to tears. Um, I'm like that with my Rick Grimes at the minute, although it's a fucking awesome figure, but it's one of them. I know what it's worth, but I don't know anybody who want to pay me what it's worth. So probably the Rick Grimes and Dexter might be close. And... Mm. Maybe the Wolverine, the uh, X Men Originals, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine, are probably close to selling that. Maybe the Bruce Lee's, I don't know. Um, what else might you want to know? I don't know, this has been a fucking long video, so if you've watched all this, respect to you. Um, I will say, anybody. Um, watching this on YouTube, wants to talk to me directly, like I said, either leave your comments next time I'm on Fig Figure Talk, or that's what I want to talk about. Other collectors, namely. Uh, I'll just reel a few off, honestly tell you my thoughts on them, or why I think that you should consider them and watch them. Um, I've obviously mentioned Morris, Moggy215, awesome guy, he doesn't release as much as he used to do, he used to put videos out pretty regular, but he's pulled away a little bit at the moment, but he's a fucking great guy. He does more work actually now on the Ultimate Collectors channel, which we started together. Um, so Morris, check him out. Again, Dean Knight, I mentioned him earlier. We all know what Dean Knight does, he's massive. Uh, so have a look at him. Carlos16 scale, obviously. We know his own channel. Uh, again, he's been on Ultimate Collectors channel, he's been appearing on Figure Talk. He does a lot of reviews, Carlos, because he gets a lot of figures. So, like different stuff as well, quite diverse. Not all Hot Toys, although he'd, I think his Hot Toys are still pride of place, but he does get other stuff as well. Uh, Nenny D, obviously, uh, does get a lot of release uh, early release stuff, and does also do other stuff on top of, <coughs> okay, no, on top of Hot Toys, uh, and I, I think he said the other day he were moving into the one for one scale as well, so if that's your thing, then have a look at Nenny D's channel. Um, Xenomorph, Awesome uh, reviewer, very laid back, very different to me. To say we both do a similar thing, I think he's very, um, very chilled out, very relaxed. Um, likes what he likes, uh, but he's not ranting and raving or giving off what I would consider strong opinions where it's like, this is what I see and fuck you if you don't agree. He's not like that. Um, Rhino Faroki, obviously, at minute his time's pretty tied up with the, um, I think he's doing an awesome thing. When me and him tested that a fucking, fucking oh, what is it, about three, four months ago, I never thought it would take off like it did. Uh, I still don't know what it does views-wise or what the interest is in it. It's hard to gauge, but I think the fact that he actually puts the time in, I've got some respect to him, and he's a good reviewer as well. Um, a lot of guys, the up-and-coming guys, obviously, I can't name them all because there's fucking too many, but just uh, Wolf's Blood is great, like I say, uh, on Grown Ups, who also appears on uh, the Ultimate Collector's channel, Mike Son, uh, now Mike Saunders, the channel, still reviews. A lot of guys, I've been fucking cool with a lot of guys, and like I say, it's hard to fucking reel them off. Um, Yvon Seb, he's a great guy, although I haven't seen much from him either lately. I've, I've seen him on uh, Facebook more, I've seen him on YouTube, but I suppose I haven't been around YouTube a lot really, so maybe he has been doing stuff and I've missed it, but... Uh, yeah, I think if you look at them guys, you're not going to go far wrong. Um, and they've all been good friends to me as well. That's why I uh, that's why I've mentioned them, and they're probably first to my mind. Like I said, the sellers I've mentioned, uh, Facebook friends, respect to you. People on sideshow freaks, most of you respect to you. There's a few over there fucking can't can't tolerate you. Um, anybody else? Oh, Darth. Darth Magnus, fucking good guy. Don't see much of him though, uh, but he is a top youth. Um, fucking hell, I'm forgetting people. I don't know. There's a lot of good guys. Like I said, I just can't fucking think to name them all. Um, 
not much more I can say. I hope you've fucking enjoyed this 15 hours fucking video. And like I say, I know you're not gonna watch it all in one go and most of it will bore you to tears. But I have tried to be, tried to be honest about everything from start point to now. Where do I go from now? Well, I'm gonna take this chair back downstairs. I'm gonna take camera down. And, uh, now I'm gonna try um, I'll try and do probably Superman's review next. In fact, before that, I might do. I'm talking we're doing a collection video, a new one, like a short down version of collection video for Ultimate Collector's Channel, probably with music on it. And then I want to do like a, a collection video, but with a difference. Most people, and I've done it myself, you get your camera and you just walk around collection up and down shelves. Where what I want to do is I want to set the turntable up on top shelf and put each figure on one at a time and basically say really quickly what I like and what I dislike about it or what I've altered on it. I want to do a collection video like that and then I want to review. I want to review Superman, I want to review Jordan, and I want to review this version 1 Kobe Bryant because I'm going to sell that version, I think, because I want the second version. I know it's about fucking 60 quid more, but it does come with the um, the round base, same as the Jordan one. So, um, yeah, I'm probably going to sell that Kobe Bryant pretty cheap off around about what I got it for, and then probably put some money towards and get the version 2 one. Uh, so that's where I am. I am around. Like I said, I'm sorry if I don't get back to your messages. I get fucking loads. I wish I could. I wish I could sit here without showing you people's names and fucking and show you my messages. Because I'm sure when people, well, I watch people and they say, "Oh, I'm busy. I'm swamped under." And you think you're fucking lying? You're not that swamped under. But my Facebook's pretty much going off regular. Like the guy who asked me if I wanted the new low key back. 20 minutes ago is already sending me messages with just fucking question marks in it as if to say do you want the fucker or not I'm sorry I answered you straight back like I said since last time I looked I got five new notifications and another message but no I don't want you low key um, but that's about it for now guys like I say you've been asking me to do a video I'll put you this big bastard of a video on I said it might not be what you were looking for because you didn't want to because you probably want to see some reviews or something like I said I just wanted to get this off my chest so you know where I am you know where I've come from all you new subscribers thanks please like me stuff because that way other people see that you've liked a certain video then they'll check it out and that'll keep me subscribers going up and hopefully my views going up which obviously will keep me more interested so uh, but for now Thanks for spending this time with me. This is Clipper King. And I'm out of here.